you can have free will. You can choose to do right or choose to do wrong. I mean, just like, you know, the slave masters, they, they chose of their own free will to be evil and to be wicked when the Bible, you know, tells them to do the opposite. You know, that's, that's what you, they use their own free will. Yeah, the reason slavery exists is because the same reason why your sin exists. It's the same reason why your sin exists, because God allows you to do it. God gives you free will. He wants genuine love from you, which requires your free choice to do it. So you have a free choice to keep being a sinner if you want to, or a free choice to follow Jesus Christ and stop sinning. Well, doesn't he die for our sins anyway? That doesn't mean you automatically get the, the, the benefits of that, though. The benefits of the cross are only given to those who repent, believe the gospel, and walk in his ways. Right. You know you're sinning, right? No, I'm not. No, I'm not sinning. Isn't it love thy neighbor, though? I'm loving my neighbor. Yeah. But you're not if you're... And then it's this is what the Bible teaches. This is what the Bible teaches. The Bible says God is love, and therefore God's word is loving. Therefore, telling you the truth about God's word is loving. Huh? Jesus, what you're doing. No, I'm asking questions because Jesus hung out with the people that you were criticizing. Jesus loved the people. What do you think I'm doing here today? I mean, you I'm hanging out with you. crowds that happen every single time. I'm a, I'm a fellow believer, and I hang out. You can not shake your head. I highly doubt that. Yeah, I highly doubt that too. I'm a Christian? Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you. Please never tell me what my beliefs are when y'all all can burn in hell for all I care. Showing your fruit, right? Yeah, so you're obviously not a Christian. You don't love us. Okay, well, you want us to burn in hell. love everybody, but y'all don't. Oh, so. no, no, we love everybody, actually. We don't want anyone to burn in hell, unlike you. That's not how Christian women behave, man. That's right. What do, what, how do Christian women behave? Do they cook and clean in the house all day? Like, yeah, what's the correct way for Christian women to, to like act? No ankle showing. Look in the Bible. No wrist. I'm asking you know, Ruth Yeah, a, a Christian woman is a modest woman. No, she was. She yeah, was. yeah, she's modest, she's quiet, she's meek, she's humble, she's submissive. That's what the Bible teaches. Yeah. Yeah. Ruth's in the Old Testament. I think you're thinking about oh, the woman oh, who... Oh, the absolutely not. Are you talking about men? No, absolutely not. Oh, they can. They have free will. But it's not God's will for them. That's right. That's right, he didn't. That's what movies depict Mary as, but it's not in the Bible. Well, not all men are powerful. God makes men and women, but they choose They choose what they will do with their free will. Well, what does the Bible say about it? Actually, that's not true. The Bible says that homosexuals and sodomites are condemned. Nope, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. It says, Do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites will inherit the kingdom of God. You can, get, you can tell yourself that if you want to, but the word is malakoi, it means homosexual. The word is sodomite, it means, it's archinocotis, it means sodomite. Yep. So you can, you can make these things up and believe lies if you want to, but the Bible says what it says. God has not changed. God always has and always will condemn sexual perversion in every form. And every, well, you can believe that if you want, it doesn't make it true. The only Bible there is the Holy Bible, written by holy men of old, inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible teaches. Why is it surprising to you? There's other Bibles that condemn unbelief. What Bibles are you talking about? Any other. Like what? Give me an example. So. So you don't even have an example. It's other Bibles that condemn what I do. We don't even have an example. The Bible is God's holy word. No, fake Hebrew Israelites, not Israelites. Yes, it does. You can read it. Fake Hebrew Israelites, all in green, all in the same font. It's very, it's very obvious what I'm talking about. Yes, Muslim, that's right. Because they don't follow the God of the Bible. They follow a false God. No, the only God there is. The God of the Bible. There is no other God. There's none before him, there's none after him. No, no, not my belief, what the truth is. The truth of God's word declares the one true and living God. Every other God according to the Bible are demons. That's it. That simple. That's right. Muslims follow a demon. You've been asking me questions already. Go ahead and ask another one if you want to. Have you ever like masturbated before? See now, 
that that's that's an example of what a wicked depraved sexy perverted woman is like you're a sexual pervert the bible never says that where does the bible say that why is your mind in the gutter why is your mind in the gutter why are you asking those kind of questions the bible never teaches you to cut off your arm never Nope. No. You you do? Used to. You do? I'm not saying I don't. Okay, I'm just, just I'm asking you a question. Do you drink you alcohol? Drug users, no, I don't drink alcohol. But it says drunkards too. My question is, what do Muslims have to do with hell? They follow a false god, which is a demon. According to the Bible. They're not following the Jesus Christ of the scriptures. Therefore they have no forgiveness of sins, they have no eternal life. It's that simple. So you're invalidating someone else's beliefs? Just like they invalidate my beliefs with their beliefs. How do they invalidate? They're exclusive. They believe that I would go to the Muslim hell. That's right. They're just not, they're just not uh, loving enough to stand up and tell people that. But don't you think Christians should be loving enough to do the other? You know? What do you mean by that? I should tell them a lie? That's love? To lie to them? That's hate. But loving them is telling them the truth. But I'm telling what the Bible teaches. I preach the Bible, God's Word. Not my opinions, not your opinions, not anyone else's opinions. I preach the Bible, God's Word, because the truth sets people free. So are God's words hateful words then if he's not going to... Only from a sinner who loves their sin. Yeah. Truth sounds like hate to those who hate the truth. If you right. love your sin and you hate God, of course God's Word sounds hateful. Yeah. But to those who are saved is the power of God to salvation. Well, I mean, uh, the, the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. Well, it's your sign you're perishing. We don't want you to perish. Oh, I'm perishing? You are, because you don't understand the basics of the truth. The basics of the truth, but also, I mean, coming from someone who used to be Christian, it was a big thing to just accept everyone, you know? Well, then you never were a Christian. Yeah. I never was a Christian. No. I accepted people who were part of the LGBTQ community. That's right. If I never accepted That's right. Them. God doesn't accept them. Does God accept them? Are you supposed to be, a Christian would be like God. So God does not accept people in their sin. No one is accepted in their sin. No matter what your sin is, God calls you to forsake it, to repent of it. And if you refuse to do that, God does not receive you, he does not accept you. So, question, God makes everybody, correct? He knows where they're going to be. Doesn't make you a sinner though, that's for sure. No, 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 you didn't let me finish. God's going to create everybody from the spirit before they're born, correct? No, God doesn't create them before they're born. He creates them when they're with, and he conceives them in their mother's womb. That's what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, he conceives them and okay, creates so them. That's right. With that, don't you think he knows how their story is going to play out? Of course he does. He has exhaustive foreknowledge. So, before then, does he love them when they're young, before they make those sinning decisions? He loves them even now in the midst of their sinning decisions. So, therefore, why can't you love Muslims? Why can't you? Wait a minute. When did I say, when did I, say I didn't love Muslims? You know the definition of love. I mean, love. sir, no one is talking to you. When, when did I say I didn't love Muslims? Because clearly they're going to hell. You're no, wait a minute. Hold on a second. If this is the, the word of God, and God, according to the Bible, God is love. If God is love, he is the very definition of what love is. And if this is what his word says, that comes from his mouth, inspired through his servants to write it down in the word of God, then this is loving. See, the problem is most people think love these days is accepting anyone for whatever they want to do. That is nowhere defined as love in the Bible. God never defines love like accepting people the way they are. God calls you to repent of your sins, to change your heart, to change your mind, to cast away from you all your iniquities that you might get a new heart and your spirit. That's right. It's called becoming born again. And if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. All the old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new. Not only can they say it, it can actually be a reality. Anyone can say that, but it has to be a reality. If you really are a follower of Jesus Christ, you have been changed. You have been transformed. You have been delivered from sin. And if that's not your testimony, you can't say, biblically speaking, that you're a Christian. That's not your business. That's irrelevant. What's relevant is, do you know Jesus, the true Jesus of the Bible? You know, my 
name is my name is from the Bible. Who I am is from the Bible. And I can easily say you are a poor description of a Christian man. Because you have a name from the Bible that gives you the authority to say what a Christian is and what a Christian isn't? Yes. Absolutely not. That is so foolish. That is so foolish. That's, a, that's one of the most foolish things I've ever heard. If you, want to, if you want to tell someone who a Christian is and who isn't, you got to know what the Bible defines as a Christian, what the Bible defines as not a Christian. Well, I mean, like I said, truth sounds like hate to those who hate the hate truth. Is. You hate the truth. Yeah. I don't hate the you do. Truth. I've given you a truth. Do you hate this? Do you hate this right here? That you're using a religion to base hatred onto other people. I have not hated one person. You put words in my mouth based upon your own definition of hate and your own definition of love. I hate nobody. But in, in reality, you hate everybody because you're a sinner influencing people to sin. You're not right. following Jesus Christ yourself. You're telling people they're okay in their sin. So really, you're the one who's hateful. Right. You're leading yourself and other people to hell. Nothing more hateful than that. But if you love people, you will follow Jesus. You will lead people to Jesus. You'll be a good influence upon them and you'll follow God's word. But that's not you. So in all reality, you're just calling evil good and good evil. That's, right. That's all you're doing. You're flipping it around, you're changing definitions of words, and you're calling evil good and good evil. You're putting darkness for light and light for darkness. Right. And the Bible talks about you in Isaiah 5.20. It says, woe unto you. To change someone who they are while they're happy to become a Christian. It's not a matter who they are. God wants them to become someone different. God wants them to become someone different. And what does it matter, who they want to be or who God wants them to be? What matters eternally speaking? Who God wants them to be or who they want to be? Right. What matters eternally speaking, young lady, is who God wants them to be. Because who they want to be, oftentimes, most time, will send them straight to hell in the end. Is that what you want for them? I mean, hey, it's their life. Well, then you don't really love them, do you? You don't really love them then, do you? Well, that's not the only reason you're going to hell. Oh, that's not the only reason. Yeah, you have sin in your life, obviously, too. You said you're a former Christian, so obviously you're not following Jesus Christ, right? Well, no, not anymore because you never seem to Exactly my point. So there's lots of reasons why you're going so to hell. So is my mom going to hell for letting me step out of the Christian space? Well, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Your, your mom only has so much authority over you. And so when you become an adult, according to the legal standard of the world, 18 years old, she can't stop you. You can go do whatever you want to do. And she's not accountable for your decisions. You're accountable for your decisions. Now, she's accountable for how she raises you. She's accountable for what she's taught you, for what example she's given to you. She's responsible for all those things. But I have children at home. Some of them want to follow Jesus, some of them don't. I can't make them follow Jesus. It's their choice. It's like it's your choice. And your mother's not responsible for your choices. She's responsible for her influence upon your life. And I have no idea what kind of influence she's put upon your life. So I can't answer that question. But I can tell you this, you're not a child anymore. You're an adult. You're here at college. You're an adult. You're responsible for your own decisions. You got no one to blame but yourself for your sin. That's right. You can't blame Adam. You can't blame me. You can't blame your mother. You can't blame your father. You can't blame society. You can only blame yourself for your sin. Okay, so traumatic events, I mean, I think we've all probably experienced those. Some to a different measure than others, okay? We've all had things happen in our past, whether negative or positive, that we remember the rest of our life. No doubt about it. I remember my parents got divorced when I was eight years old. It tra traumatized me. It really did. But you know what helped me? God's a father to the fatherless. He helped me. When my father wasn't there, my father didn't care, he helped me. So I don't know what your traumatic experience is. I'm not downplaying that, but I'm simply saying you still have control of how you respond to trauma. You don't have to respond in a negative way. You don't have to get bitter. You don't have to have unforgiveness. When trauma is based off of Christianity, it's difficult to go back to the word that traumatized you. Okay, so you're saying that something happened in church. And that's what I'm saying. All of this. I'm not trying to get your specifics involved. I'm just saying you're saying something happened in church. Yes. Okay, well, listen. If someone did something unrighteous to young lady, they're in trouble with God. They have to answer, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me, let me finish. They have to answer to God for that. But you know what? If you don't like what they did to you, 
and you don't want to be around that person who traumatized you, don't go eternally to the same place they're going to go. You understand? I hear all the time, there's so many hypocrites in the church, I don't want to go to church. But I'm here to tell you, there's no hypocrites in the church of God. The church of God is the living, breathing people of God who actually follow Him and obey Him. So if someone isn't being a hypocrite, they're not following Jesus. Exactly! And they're not true pastors. They're, sh they're goat herders. They're not true pastors. What's that? Are they going to hell if they follow the word of Christ? How are they a hypocrite if they're following the word? Well, because they do all these righteous things in front of people, but behind closed doors, they're not. Well, they're not really following the word, then, are they? The Bible's against hypocrisy. Jesus had the most scathing words. Are you this young lady? Jesus had the most scathing words for hypocrites. He said, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees which is hypocrisy. So if you have a hypocrite as a pastor in your past, well, he's in trouble with God. He's not going to be able to hide any of his sins from God on Judgment Day, but you will have no excuse before God for your sin. You'll be able to stand before God and say, God, I'm so sorry. It was that pastor's fault. I'm a sinner. You won't be able to say that. You'll be accountable for your own sin. You have no one to blame but you for your action. Now, you can't blame yourself for trauma done to you that you have no control over. No, you have no one. You, you can blame people for that, but your response, your response to that influence is your choice. I mean, isn't that right? We've all had horrible things happen to us. Some from religious people, some from non-religious people. But we need to respond according to the word of God. That's what God commands us to do. And He is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for me to live the way He's called me to live, no matter what happens to me. And what trauma comes my way? Amen. That's what God wants for you. And the safest place for you to be in ladies is in His arms, in His fold, in Christ. It's the only safe place there is, is in Christ. Outside of Christ, just danger around every curve. I thought you didn't believe in God. Why would you pray for us? Well, your God doesn't exist. That's right. Only the God of the Bible exists, young lady. God has no color. God is spirit. That's right. God is spirit. The Bible never says he had copper skin. Right. That's Jesus Christ. We're talking about God the Father now, right? Is the Father ever... Did the Father ever come in human form? Did the Father ever come in human form? Well, the Bible, well, that's part of the problem. The Bible says God is spirit. God is spirit. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He has no physical color to him. Yes, Jesus Christ, God in flesh, the Son of God, was Middle Eastern. No doubt about it. He had a skin color probably between you and me. But who cares about skin color? Where does the Bible focus upon that? That's right. that's a that's a that's a false construct that society puts upon you to divide people unnecessarily. God does not care about the color of your skin. He never talks about color of skin in the scripture as if it matters. He talks about salvation and your sin, not your skin. That's what he's dealing with. Because you have no control over your skin color, but you have control over your sin and how much you committed or how little you committed. Okay, but we sin like every single day. Well, you may have, I don't. Maybe you do, but I don't. We're, we're all human beings. We all sin. Being human does not mean you have to sin. Jesus was human and he never sinned. Yeah, but we all make mistakes too. Making a mistake is not the same thing as a sin. I can make a mistake by tripping over a crack in the sidewalk, not tying my shoes. <laughs> I can make a mistake by getting an answer wrong on a test. Those are not sins. Sin is rebellion against God's word. Since when you know what you should do, you don't do it. That's sin. There's no mistakes in that. That's willful rebellion, and God calls you to stop all of it. Okay, did you sin when you were younger? Yes. Thousands of times. Tens of thousands of times. But not anymore. I've forsaken my sins. Now I live for Jesus. And that's what he wants you to do, young lady. He wants you to forsake all your sin and live for him. But it's not a matter of age. My children have not done what I've done. And I hope they never do do what I've done. They follow Christ at an early age. And that's a better testimony than 
doing all this wickedness and all this sinning, and then later on getting saved and following Jesus? I think, for, um, respectfully, I can sin every, I can commit one sin every single day, and I can still turn to Jesus, and I can still worship Jesus. I'm no longer a Christian, but I still look up to, you know, the gods and goddesses and say, at the end of the day, and say, repent my sins, and then I'll be forgiven. Well, the Bible says that the gods and goddesses of these other religions are demons. They, they can't, demons can't help you. They have no power to help you. Can you please elaborate on that? Like, I'm genuinely curious. Okay, well, the scripture says when people worship idols and make sacrifices to them, that they're literally worshiping demons. Demons are fallen angels who rebelled against God and His order in their universe and done what they want to do instead. And so when you follow them, you're following them to hell. That's where they're going to go in the end. He's a demon, not the God of the Bible, not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not yeah. the Father of Jesus Christ. Yeah, but other gods or what you would call demons, they can also walk on water. Like who? It might take, it might take like who? Who walked on water? Uh, Jesus did. Jesus and is the God I'm talking about. Yeah, and there can also be other gods that can walk on water, too. They might nope. get it the first time, more than 15 minutes, but they can still walk on You're deceiving water. yourself, young lady. Jesus Christ is God in flesh. And he says, I am the way. Not one of the ways. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Satan used to be a god too. No, he wasn't. He was an angel. He wasn't a god. He wanted to be God. That's why he got kicked out of heaven. He was an angel. That's what I said. He was an angel. And then he's now literally the most fucking hated. No, actually, you're following him right now. Um, you're a child of the devil. No, you're a child of the devil. Whether you want to admit it or not, whether you understand it or not, you're a child of the devil. I am not. You are. Just because, just because I smoke weed every other day, just because I'm part of the LGBTQ community, does not mean I'm committing sin. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness, that's you, is not of God. I do. So you're of your father, the devil, according to Jesus, according to the word of God. But you're praying to false gods. I'm Does she know good? I'm praying to Jesus, the one that died for all of us, and I do strongly believe that he has brought onto this earth, to, that he brought all of us on, on earth just to help us be the best versions of ourselves. No one and, what, and what is the best version of yourself, young lady? Living our lives to the fullest, living... What does that mean? Living the way we want to live. No, that's absolutely not what Jesus said. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus nowhere was concerned with you living the way you want to live. He's nowhere in the scripture concerned with you being happy. He's concerned with you being holy. He wants you to be holy. You can still be happy and be holy. And you can, but you're not holy, so therefore you're not happy. You're miserable in your sin. You're still, we're still wicked. I may be miserable, but I'm not a sin. No, you are a sin. You just admitted a second ago you smoke weed every other day and you're part of the LGBT community. That's sin. That's not sin. That is sin, and God's word is. Well, you don't, here's the thing. You don't get to determine what is sin and what isn't. God determines that. And God says those things are sinful. Where does the Bible say that? Where does Jesus say that? Where, where, bring out your smartphone and show me where it says, Jesus said he loves you just the way you are. Yeah, please show it to me. I got to see it. I've read the Bible, the New Testament, probably a hundred times. I've never seen it once. That Jesus loves you just the way you are. Go ahead, bring it up. All right, go ahead. Friends, the Bible says that it's appointed us a man once to die, and after this, the judgment. And God is going to judge you for all of your sins. There's many young people here today. One of the major sins of this day. Y'all really like the website reserved this shit. Do we what? Y'all really wait reserved this website. Sure did. Sure did. For the sake of God's word, it's important. Bible says you ought to live to please God because you 
Okay, where does it say he loves you no matter what? That doesn't say that. That doesn't say it either. Number five. Doesn't say it there either. Nope. 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 Doesn't say. I mean, you're. You gave me a website. I've gone through ten of the scriptures now, and none of them say Jesus loves you just the way you are. In fact, this one right here, number nine. Read, read number nine. See what it says. What does it say? Might have mercy upon us, so our God will abundantly pardon. You know, it's a very. He loves those who keep His commandments. That completely contradicts what you said, young lady. Know now then that the Lord your God is the only true God. He yep. is a faithful God who keeps the coming and proves loyal to everyone who loves him and keeps him in command. See? Even to the thousandth generation. Those who love him and keep his commandments. You're not loving him and keeping his commandments. Therefore, he, that doesn't apply to you. The Bible, nowhere you're deceiving, lady. There's nowhere the Bible says that God loves you just to wear. He calls you to repent. He calls you to change. To change your heart, to change your mind, to forsake your sins and follow him. And I strongly do believe that I can follow him and I can change later on and I can still go to heaven. No, no, no. Jesus does not lead you to sin. So by definition, if you're sinning, you're not following Jesus. You understand that? I can still worship Jesus. No, you can't worship Jesus in spirit and in truth if you're not following the truth and don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Well, if I'm in prayer, if I'm saying that I am struggling with addiction, and if I'm being truthful, and if I can, and if Jesus really can help me change that, then I think I still have a place in heaven. No, that's not the way it works. God calls you to forsake all of your sins. Listen to what Isaiah 55 says. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So God is willing to have mercy on you. He's willing to abundantly pardon you if you'll seek the Lord while he may be found, and call upon him while he's near, and forsake your wicked ways and your evil thoughts, and return to him. If you won't do those things, then he will not abundantly pardon you. He will not have mercy upon you. There's conditions for God's mercy. Why would a, why would a, like a, even a judge in this land, why would he forgive a criminal and let him go free if he's planning to continue to do his crimes? That's just an earthly judge. He would be considered a fool to let a criminal go free. But what you're telling me is the infinite, omniscient, omnipresent God of all the universe is going to let you go free or be his child while you continue to be wicked towards him? Well, when you put it that way, you can, like, I can, like, okay, example. Let's just say I break into a bank and I rob a bank. Uh -huh. I go to jail for it. Um, I start worshiping Jesus and I change my ways. I still, I, will I still be able to go to heaven if I don't commit any sins anymore? Of course, but that's not your, that's not your scenario, though. Your scenario is that you're continuing to commit sins. That's your scenario. You haven't forsaken your sins. You're not really worshiping him. True worship comes from the heart. Yes, it does. Okay, so if you have a wicked heart because you're still sinning, you can't really worship him. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I have a wicked heart. I may have, a, my, my heart might be a little bit black, but it's not wicked. Now, what happens when you become a... I still have light in my heart. Well, no doubt you have illumination, knowledge, understanding of the truth, but the problem is not your understanding of the truth. Your problem is that you don't follow the truth. You're not obeying the truth. May you please elaborate a little bit more on that, sir? Okay, John 14, 21, Jesus said, He who has my commandments and keeps them. It's available to you today. You have to repent, friends. You have to turn from your wicked ways. It says, He who has my commandments and keeps them. The words of Jesus. Yes, sir. It is he who loves me. 
So who loves Jesus? He who has his commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves him. And he who loves Jesus will be loved by the Father. And Jesus said, I will love him and manifest myself to him. So you're not keeping his commandments, therefore you're not loving him. Therefore, the love of Jesus Christ is relational love he gives to all his children. It's not upon you. God doesn't have his relational love upon you either. either. And you're not forgiven, not forgiven of your sins. You can't have forgiveness of sins until you forsake them completely. There's no such thing as I'll get rid of my sins a little bit over time. God commands you to forsake all your sins completely. Everything you know you shouldn't be doing, get rid of it. But do you think that process takes overnight, or do you think that process takes time? No, it, well, if you're doing it in your own strength, it'll take a very long time. If I can never happen. But if you're doing it, you're submitting your life to God. You're surrendering to Him, surrendering your sin. You're truly repenting. In a moment in time, God will change you. God will change you. Now you change yourself. God will change you. I was a wicked sinner 25 years ago by myself in my bedroom. Well, now, I, if you don't mind me asking, I'm so sorry for interruption, but if you don't mind me asking, what were you doing 25 years ago? I was a drunkard, I was a fornicator, I was a liar, I was a thief. But everything you could think of, I was doing it. Okay? So I was wicked. But Jesus changed me in a moment in time because I surrendered my life to him. He changed me in a moment in time. Not because of my self-effort, not because I'm making amends, because he delivered me. He saved me. And that hasn't happened to you. And it, and it was your choice to go to God, was it? Of course it was. Man, of course it was. But it also goes both ways. He helps you change, but ultimately, it has to be you. He can, he's, a big, he's, a, he's, a, he's a huge factor. Okay, so let me, get, let me give you a scenario. Ultimately, you. No, that's not true. That's not true. So let, right now, what you're doing, in lady, metaphorically speaking, is you're drowning at sea. You can't swim. You don't know how to swim. You're, I can't I'm saying metaphorically. I, I'm sorry, I'm me metaphorically, right now, in your sin, you're drowning at sea. You don't know, you don't know how to swim. You have no way of saving yourself. You're going to die. And then a life, then a Coast Guard comes along and throws a life preserver to you. And you grab onto the life preserver and they bring you to shore. And then they go back to shore and there's a whole news conference about what happened to you. And you go there and say, I saved myself. I'm the one who grabbed onto the life preserver. Yes, but it was that lifeguard that threw it at me. Exactly. Exactly. But you are without hope. You are hopeless in your sin. You are completely dependent upon Jesus Christ. Yes, you grab onto the life preserver. That's all you do. But are you sure that, you know, that no one is completely hopeless? Everyone is hopeless in their sin. That's what I said. In your sin, you're hopeless. And may I please ask how I'm currently sinning? You well, you admitted a little bit ago you were smoking weed. And I, you made a little, little bit ago you were praying to other gods. And you believe in other gods. Those are both sins. That's all I need to know. That's a sin as well. Uh, smoking weed, I am trying to cut that out now. Um, so the, 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 do you see what? The, I'm still not understanding though how there's there's not other gods, and while I do agree with you on some things, I there's still a vast majority that I don't agree with you, but I'm still willing to listen to you, and I'm still willing to see you, like hear what you have to say. You have to understand that every religion there is is exclusive. So you go to a Muslim, and he tells you that the Quran says he can say my God's the only God. You go to Jews, they'll say, my God's the only God. You go to Christians, they'll say, my God's the only God. You go to Hindus, they'll say, my millions of gods are the only millions of gods there are. Mormons will say the same thing. Jehovah's will say the same thing. So this whole thing of you like picking and choosing like a buffet, oh, I want a little bit of this God, a little bit of that God, a little bit of God, that God, does not comport with the truth. I'm just, I just believe that there are other gods out there. And I also, right. I do strongly believe that you know, Jesus Christ, like Jesus Christ, I, I do fully believe in, but I also believe in other gods. Too. Jesus himself said, no one can serve two masters. For you either hate the one and love the other, or else you be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and other gods. It's impossible. By serving other gods, by praying to other gods, by definition, you're an idolater and you are therefore not following the Jesus Christ of the Bible. So I have to... So like I so like I could love Jesus and I had to hate a lot. Yeah, Allah's a demon. You should hate a lot. You should hate all demons. 
hate everything that's wicked. Now, I don't think they're exactly you don't hear it demons. That's what you said. So the Bible says something different. See, that, that, that's another sure sign. You're an idolater. That you don't have the God, you're not serving the God of the Bible. Because the God of the Bible says things, and you disagree with what he says. So really what you're saying to the God of the Bible is, I'm smarter than you. I'm wiser than you. You are wrong. I never said I You don't have to say it. God, but I'm just saying that. Like, if I worship one God, then I have to despise the others. But I don't despise all the other gods. I mean, sure, yeah. Like, Part of the problem. Sure, yeah. Like, I mean, I like, you know, some of the gods more, but that doesn't mean I don't hate them and I won't listen to them either. It's part of the problem. You're not willing to listen to the truth. I'm willing to listen to the truth. No, because, because the, the truth, the truth is Jesus. He's the truth. So he declared about himself, I am the truth. But do you think he really is the only God? Of course. That's what he said. Is he a liar? But, I mean, no. Listen, listen. If Jesus Christ is lying, he deserves you to listen to him not at all. But if someone's a liar, they're not trustworthy. Are you listening? Are you, are you listening? Jesus, if he's a liar, he's not worthy to be listened to. Okay? And the Bible says about Satan, he's the father of lies. He's not worthy to listen to. But if Jesus is who he says he is, you ought to listen to him and him only. So what do you say about Lucifer, the fallen angel? He sacrificed himself for someone he really loved. He sacrificed himself for someone he really loved. Where did you get that from? Where did you get that from? Sir, um, I really don't remember the video, the title of it. But I saw, but I watched a documentary a couple years back. Man, something the Bible teaches. Bible says that he wanted to be God. He wanted to ascend the holy hill. He wanted to dethrone God Almighty and be God himself. That wasn't loving towards anyone, especially himself. That's wicked. You can't dethrone God. There is no God before him. There is no God after him. He's the one true and living God. He is the, he is the creator of Lucifer. He's the creator of you, creator of me. And that alone makes him deserving of your worship. But does he, but he, did he, yes, he did, yes, um, Seed snatchers, seed snatchers, you're wicked. I'm not, I'm not going to talk to her about class words. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh-huh. Not to Muhammad, my friend, not to Islam. Islam is not the way to God, my friend. Islam is not the way to God. Remember that girl from last time? She was foaming at the mouth, yeah, man. The right. was, I was like, she, I remember her. She, needed, she had like chapped lips and foaming at the mouth, okay. screaming the whole time. Yeah. She's yeah. a little more chill today. Yeah. Yeah. Praise but God, I mean, you got to talk to her, bro. You might say, oh, that's very exclusive. That's actually proof the, the, the Bible of what happened last time. What happened last time, bro? Well, you know, my friend, the Bible is very exclusive. Only through Jesus Christ can you come to the Father. There's no other way, friend. There's no other way. That's good. Yeah, they're professing Christians. They, they, that, that girl lied to me. The, blue. She, the girl who pulled her aside said, I'm, I want to talk to her about class things. I can see his mouth moving. He's saying New Testament. I just heard him say New Testament. You can't lower it, bro. Yeah. God is wanting you to come to Him in repentance. He's wanting you to forsake your sin, the sin that's going to damn you to hell. Friends, don't continue to be a sinner. Don't listen to these false pastors telling you that we're all going to continue in sin. The Bible says nowhere, nowhere in the Bible does it say that. In fact, it says the contrary. The Bible says, woe to you. Or if you call evil good, good and good evil. The Bible says, how shall we continue in sin any longer? Those of us who have died in sin, how can you continue in? And you, if you profess to be a Christian and you're still living in sin, friend, you need to do some self-examination because that's not what the scripture says. The Christian life is about the Christian life is about holiness. The Christian life is about living a life pleasing to God, not a life pleasing to the flesh, not a life pleasing to yourself. It's about surrendering your own life and giving up your own life. Because Jesus says, he who desires to save his life will lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake shall find it. You can only find life through Christ, friend. He's the only one. Your sin will never satisfy you. Your sin will never satisfy you, friend. All your lusting, 
All your pornography will never satisfy you. It only gives you temporary gratification, but it never satisfies in the end, friends. It leaves you feeling guilty. I haven't seen him yet. He leaves you an empty shell. My friends, but God, Jesus can give you what you really need, friends. He can give you the true life that you desire. Because every single one of you desires to live. Even those people who say, I want to die, that's not true. You don't really want to die. That, that, that's a, there's a, a mechanism put within you that wants to live. And friends, you should love your soul. You should love your soul more than you love your life on this earth. Because this life is going to, is going to uh, perish away. And it's going to be coming a new earth and a new heaven, friends. You need to have be reborn. You need to be born again, friends. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is here. If you can forsake his way, currently, forsake currently way it's a different mood, that's for sure. Your drunkenness, yeah. your fornication, your revelry, friends, turn from these things and turn to Jesus Christ. Receive forgiveness of sin. It's such a serious thing. No more sleep. Receive forgiveness, friends. Don't continue to be a sinner. Don't continue to smoke weed. Think that I'm okay with God. Don't continue to get drunk and ask for forgiveness and think you're okay with God. Continuing in that lifestyle. Friends, you're deceiving your own self. You deceive yourself every single time. You think that you, you can just keep living in your sin. Just ask when does the class switch? Have no real change. Uh, have so no real God Tuesday. God keep so keep probably in about... 15 minutes, I think. Okay. 10 or 15 minutes. That's not like busy. Uh, we'll probably, we probably missed it real big. Oh, really? Sorry, bro. No, let's go. Oh, sure, let's go. Forgive you, bro. Sure, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You'll get there, bro. I'll get there, bro. Um, okay, I'll preach. Okay. Unless you want to preach. Uh, I'll wait. Okay. Yeah, it's up to you, bro. So the Bible makes it clear that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not deceive yourself. Neither fornicator, nor idolater, nor adulterer, nor homosexual. The false teachers. You want to come prove that, young man? You want to prove I'm a false teacher from the Bible? Or are you going to make a false accusation? which makes you a liar. You know who the false accusers were? In the scripture, a false accuser were Satan and a demon. You are a false accuser. You don't know what a false teacher is, young man. You seed snatcher, you'll give an account for that. You wicked devil, you false Christian, you'll give an account for that. Of course, you're a coward. You won't stand up for what you believe. You can't defend it with the word of God, that's for sure. Where's your boldness now, young man? Where is it? Speak up again. Tell what the Word of God says. Come teach the false teacher. Come teach the false teacher. Please, come teach me if I'm so false. Yes. Go cower away in a corner. The Bible says the cowardly will not inherit the kingdom of God. The cowardly should be cast into the lake of fire. But the righteous are as bold as lions. So many professing Christians are wicked. They have no boldness because they're wicked, and they know they'd be hypocrites to speak up boldly about the Word of God. They're not following it, not obeying it themselves. That's part of the problem, isn't it? But Jesus Christ said, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisee which is hypocrisy. For if nothing covered, that will not be revealed. Nothing hidden, that will not be made known. God's going to uncover. God's going to reveal it all. For there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him. So he must give an account. All your gossip, all your idle words, all your lying words, all your misrepresentations, every lustful thought, every bitter, unforgiving thought, God is going to deal with it. You can't run from God. You can look good in front of your friends. You can speak so proudful in front of your friends, but you won't do that when you stand before God. That's for sure. 
No creatures hidden from his sight. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. What has God seen in your life today? Evil? What has God seen in your life today? Good? Good for the glory of God? You know, Scripture says, whatever you do, whether you eat or whether you drink, do all for the glory of God. But so many of you, you couldn't care less about God and what he thinks about your thoughts, what he thinks about your words. Scripture says, the words of Jesus, therefore either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. How can you, you brood of vipers, how can you who speak evil, how can you speak good who have an evil heart? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure's heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you that for every idle word men may speak, for every idle word men may speak, they'll give account of it in the day of judgment for by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. God's going to call you to give an account for your words. Your words come out of your heart. They show the state of your heart. That you need a new heart. You need new desires. And why would you die in your sins? Why will you go to hell? Why won't you turn and live? God does not take the light in the death of the wicked, but rather they turn and live. That's what God wants for you, to cast away from you all your sins, to cast away from you all your transgressions. That'll be the ruin of you and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit and new desires and walk in the ways of Jesus Christ. So many of you profess to be Christians, but you're living a hypocritical life. Some of you profess to be Christians, but you're hypocrites. You're not a real Christian. A real Christian who has the real grace of God that brings salvation will walk a different way. They'll deny ungodliness and worldly lust and live soberly and righteously and godly in the present age. I'm going to live a wicked life. And give an account of your sin. You can sing your wicked songs. You're not a child anymore. That song doesn't apply to you. You're an adult and you're wicked. You're wicked, you've turned aside. You're not a child. You wanna sing your childish songs? Oh, Jesus loves me. What, do you love him? Do you love him? Do you love him? Are you obeying him? Well, that doesn't help you. That doesn't help you. Where does the Bible say Jesus loves you? What? Keep singing. Keep reading. Keep reading. Keep reading it. Yeah, so for God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He who believes him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God and did not come into the light because their deeds were evil. Yes, you don't love God. If you really love God, you'll obey God. What Jesus Christ said, go ahead, ask them. If you really love Jesus Christ, you'll obey him. That's his own words. John 14, 15, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Tell me you love him while you sin against him every single day. Well, you obviously don't love Jesus then. You're a sexual pervert. You're wicked. Lesbians don't love Jesus. Sodomites don't love Jesus. 
fornicators don't love Jesus. Liars and thieves and lustful porn watchers don't love Jesus. If you love Jesus, you'll obey him. According to Jesus Christ, love is obey obedient. The Bible teaches, don't deceive yourself. In James chapter 2, the Bible says, you believe there's one God, you do well. But even demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Faith without works is dead. Y'all judging y'all sinning right now. Stop judging. Show me where the Bible says sinning is judging. Tell me where the Bible says. Now, wait a minute now. The Bible never says God's the only judge. Tupac said that, not God. God never said he's the only one of judges. Hey, bro. God is the only judge. Where does the Bible say that? Oh, so your God says that. But the God of the Bible, the only one that exists, says the opposite. Well, you have a false God. You have a false God. You don't have a God of the Bible. The God of the Bible commands us to judge. So I will judge because God commands it. The spiritual man judges all things. Give me a Bible verse, sinner. Give me a Bible verse. Says who? The devil? Who does God send to hell, young man? Who does God send to hell? Those he loves? For all eternity? Do you send people to hell? Do people go to hell, young man? Yes, you don't have an answer, do you? So what's your point? My point is people go to hell. My point is God commands us to judge. What's that? No, I haven't. You've been to Australia before? Yeah. You've been to South Africa before? How about Mozambique? I guess it doesn't exist. Mozambique doesn't exist. Newsflash, this man hasn't been there, so it doesn't exist. Right? Right? That's the way it works? That's the way logic works? I haven't been there, so it doesn't exist. You're foolish, young man. You ever been to Antarctica before? You ever been to Antarctica? You ever been to the moon? I guess they don't exist. I guess they don't exist. You ever seen your brain? I guess it doesn't exist. I mean, I see no evidence of it anyway. But the fact is, is this you sleep at night? This, I don't do this so I can sleep at night, young man. I don't do this so I can sleep at night. I do this because I want to obey God. I don't care about your vibe. I don't care about your negativity. I care about God's word. Oh well. Oh well. Oh well. Listen. Grow up. Grow up, young man. Grow up. All your positive vibes will go to hell with you. All your positive vibes will go to hell with you. And you'll never have never positive vibe again. According to you. I know you have. You don't even know him. My dad's a pastor, even he knows that you guys are weird. Your pastor's a false pastor then. Oh no, he is not. He is not a false pastor. You guys are. I can call a pastor right now. My dad's love for this. I don't care what your pastor says. Bro, it doesn't matter. What does the Bible say? That's what we Why care about. Bible, Why you what, are you Bible, what are you going by? What are you going by? By what? You twist the word, you you twist the word of God. No, you don't. Twist okay, how old are you? You understand the Bible in your own language. What? What's your language? English? Bro, you're confused. Yeah, you're severely confused. You're confused, man. Most of you are confused. Most of you are confused. You don't understand the truth. You don't understand God's word. You don't understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's very clear. He doesn't love you no matter what. Yeah, he loves you no matter what. As long as you don't. As long as you don't what? So if you don't believe, he doesn't love you? He just messed up his own logic right there. So if you don't believe, he doesn't love you? Yep. You gave an exception. You gave an exception. He said, unless you don't believe in him, he doesn't love you. So you said, young man. 
So if you find someone here who doesn't believe and doesn't love them, where does God say that? No, and holy people, not an unholy people. The Holy Spirit will not dwell in an unholy temple. Because you're wicked, that's why. I'm not prophesying anything. I'm not prophesying anything. Well, that's what you say. According to you. No, I'm not going home. No, to go home. Not going home. That's why all that in your beer is stretched. I don't stretch because I got one. Hey, there's the communist. You don't drink water? You don't drink water? Is that what you said? Hey, you can't put stuff on the sign, man. Mr. Communist. It's, it's paper. Can't put it on. Oh, damn. Sorry, guys. I, I um, I forgive you. I forgive you. Flat Earth and a communist. Wow. You're delusional in so many ways, young man. Like I said, God loves us no matter what. The Bible never says that. You just said that's something opposite of yourself a second ago. You said if someone doesn't believe and doesn't love them. God loves us no matter what. Except you don't believe in them, right? God loves us no Unless matter. you don't believe in them, right? What about God Hitler? Does God no love Hitler? What? Except if you don't believe in them, right? Does God love Hitler? But you said a second ago. God lo loves everyone. Who does he send to hell? Who does he send to hell? Actually, actually, it's not true. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you John 14, 21. The words of Jesus Christ. That's all you keep saying. That's all you keep saying. Yes, that's all I have is God's word. I'm a broken record for Jesus. I'm a Bible parrot. That's all I am, man. Because God's word is more trustworthy than your opinion, your faulty opinion. God's I'm full of the word of God, you're right. The Holy Spirit. Yes. Young oh, man, you're lost. I don't care about your feelings, young man. I don't care about your feelings. You are not the authority, man. The Bible is. The Bible is. Yeah, you are. You just made, you made yourself an authority over me. Huh? What are you? Are you still a sinner? Are you still a sinner? Yes, I'm a sinner. Well, then you're not with God. Yes, I. I repent every day for my sins. It's not doing you any good. I don't good. try to sin on purpose. I don't do it it's on purpose. It's not doing you any good. You know Jesus can deliver you from your sin. You so you said it right now. No, we're not. No, we're not. According to you, you but not the Bible. Right okay, according to you, you said I'm sinning. So what's the According to the Bible, you're according sinning. According to the Bible, you're sinning. Oh, my. You said you're a sinner. And you just said you're a sinner. Oh, and we're sinning every day. You're trying to use the Bible uh, to go against us. What that do you use? That ain't how you do it. The Bible is against you, young man. You're a sinner. The Bible and God are against sinners. It hasn't helped you, young man. I've been church all my hasn't life. helped you. Hey, man, I can go to McDonald's all my life. Hasn't helped you. That ain't helped me. Hasn't helped you. Y'all fuck with Lithuania? I fuck with Lithuania. That's for damn shit. I got a quick yeah. question. Yeah. What's your audio on Excuse me? Clap, clap for the communists. I still so didn't hear you. What's my what? Ideology. Ideology? I'm a biblicist. You guys would not want to live in a I, I obey and believe and preach the Bible. That's not a definition. So, hold on. It is. So, hey, my man. My man. The Bible changes the right? Let him talk. But right now, you're just hurting others. That's not respect the Bible. Say it again. The Bible tells you to respect others and treat them. Where does the Bible say that? Read it. Read it. I've read it. Where does the Bible say that? Please show me. I, that, please show me. Please show me where the Bible says respect others. We got some other Bible they don't create. I don't know what. Oh, they we don't create it, huh? But you can't prove that. You have to get. You about to prove it right now? Okay, <laughs> okay. You don't we'll even see. Nobody's gonna pull up, man. Cause you don't read the Bible. Stop playing, man. Stop That's playing. Stop playing. Y'all playing. Y'all a joke. Like, come on. You here Jokes front. on you, man. If you continue in sin. You out here front. Y'all a joke. Who in Matthew 5:43 okay. through verse 48? You have heard that it was saying, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Right. So that you may be the sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends the rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do you have even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the verse 48, do the same. Verse 48. Oh, 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 you stopped. Go to verse 48. Come on, don't stop there, man. Keep going. No, go to verse 48. Come on. Come on, man. Don't stop too short there. 
Oh, 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 wow. uh-oh. So God commands you to be perfect, young man. God commands you to be perfect. I am perfect in Christ. Perfect? In Christ, I am. Show me, Tell me you're perfect. perfect. In Christ. No, no, show you're not me perfect, you're perfect in Christ because you're not following that verse 46 whatsoever. Absolutely. Wait a minute, hold on a second. You're not, no, Please no, show no. me how I'm not following loving my neighbor. Because right. you're discouraging your enemies. It says, love your no, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, no, 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 hold on. No, no, no. All I've done is call my enemies so-called to repentance. No, 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 no. And that is encouragement, whether you like it or not. No, you just you're mad because I'm telling you, your son is telling you everything Bro, that is judging. Number one, I'm not mad. Number two, you're wrong. Number three, you don't know what love is. I don't know what love is. That's right. So again, like I'm saying, how are you able to preach God's word if you're not living by his own verse? I am living by his own verse. I am. Because you you're reading your sign, that sign says, you know him. judgment what? is coming. Yes. Basically, you're saying you're just you're not Is that true? Is judgment coming? Is judgment coming? Is judgment coming? All the way down. Is judgment coming? Keep reading. Hey, stop discouraging, keep reading. Hey, stop discouraging me. You're not being loving. Stop discouraging me. You're not being loving to me. Stop discouraging me. You're not loving me. Stop discouraging me. Stop discouraging me. Stop discouraging me. You're discouraging me right now. You're not being loving. Oh, so you're doing wrong right now. So you're a hypocrite right now. So you have a log in your eye right now. But he doesn't I'm not, I don't think discouragement is a sin. I don't think me tell. You guys are judging as hypocrites. The Bible nowhere says that when you call sinners to repentance. It doesn't you're saying love. So love, you can't call someone to repentance? You can't say that something is wrong. What are you talking about, man? You are so deceived. Jesus constantly called things wrong. Jesus constantly called things wrong. What, Jesus is a sinner? You think God There's two things. You won't answer the question, will you? No. What's that? I think God what? The Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day and that he hates the sinner. But the Bible says. No doubt about it. And that's why I'm calm to repentance. No, only only if they repent. What, what you call discouragement is me calling them to repentance. What you call discouragement, what you call discouragement is me calling them out of their sin. That's exactly what Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ called them to repentance. He called them out of their sin. That's what I do. Therefore, I'm not discouraging anybody. He feels bad for them? Where does the Bible say that? Where does the Bible say God feels bad for them? What's that? What are you what? About him rising from the grave. Rising from the grave. He died for them. Uh huh. You better open Psalm 5 5. You better open Psalm 5 5. You better open Psalm 11 5. If they repent, if they forsake their sins. So what if they don't? What if they don't? What if they don't? What if they don't? What if they don't repent? No one discourages anyone, young man. What you're calling discouragement is me calling to repentance. You're a false teacher. Yes, teacher. That's right. The word of God. The word of God. You know what the real issue is here, man? You fear man. That's what the issue is. You fear man. You fear man. First Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. You just expose yourself as an idolater. First Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. They'll go to hell. They'll go to hell. Psalm 5 5. Psalm 5 5. Look up. Psalm 5 5. Psalm 11 5. Psalm 5 5 and Psalm 11 5. Look it up, man. See if you believe God's word or not. Nope, not me. Hey, talk for yourself, not for me, young man. 
I know Stan never did. I even close. Judging not a sim. We've already dealt with that. In Christ, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Read it out loud. Psalm 5-5, five, five, Psalm 11-5. Okay. The Lord of them is the righteous, but the wicked of those who love violence, it's okay. Oh, so does he hate the wicked? 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 It said he hates him. You read it. You're a liar. You're a liar. You read it for yourself, and now you're lying about it. You literally just read it. Now you're lying about it. It's, it's right in there, and you're lying about it now. You're lying about it. You're a liar. You have your father the devil. You have your father the devil. Says who? Says who? Romans 3. Well, what does Matthew 5 48 say? It doesn't matter? It doesn't matter what God's word says? Okay, then listen to what it says. Listen to what it says. Therefore, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. You have a problem, don't you? Not obeying God. Not obeying God. Not obeying God. Your whole discouragement line has been defeated, young man. It's been defeated. It's been destroyed. No, no, only to only to you, a sinner. Only to you. Only to the blind and delusional. Someone who claims to be something they're not. Well, that's. Where does the Bible say that? Well, the Bible says that hypocrites do the opposite of what they say they are. That's what a hypocrite is, a pretender. Did Jesus judge people? Did Jesus judge people? He's a hypocrite according to you. Does God judge people? Does God judge people? Does God judge people? I guess he's a hypocrite according to you. But man, you have no ground to stand on. You're delusional. You're literally delusional. You're delusional. I've asked you lots of questions. You're not answering any of them. Answer my questions. Answer my questions. Answer my questions. Answer my questions. Is God a hypocrite? Is God a hypocrite? Does God judge people? Does God judge people? Does God judge people? Is he a hypocrite? Is God going to hell that he created? Is Jesus Christ going to hell? Is Jesus Christ going to hell? Was he a hypocrite for judging people? Was Jesus Christ a hypocrite for judging people? I don't have to ask you questions. Was Jesus a hypocrite? Was Jesus a hypocrite? Was Jesus a hypocrite? Was Jesus a hypocrite? Was he a hypocrite? Yes or no? Was Jesus a hypocrite? Yes or no? Yes or no? Was Jesus a hypocrite? Was he a hypocrite? Yes or no? Yes or no? Was Jesus Christ a hypocrite? Was he a hypocrite? Did he judge people? Yes or no? Yes or no? Did he judge people? Did Jesus judge people? Yes or no? Hypocrite or not? Is Jesus going to hell? Yes or no? Very simple question, man. Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Did Jesus judge people? Did Jesus judge people? Yes or no? Was he a hypocrite for doing that? Is Jesus a hypocrite? So Jesus is going to hell? Oh, now the blasphemy comes out of your mouth. Jesus Christ, according to the pastor's son, is a hypocrite going to hell. Shame on you, sinner. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. You're blasphemous. It's not for you to judge, it's for him to judge. 
Give me a Bible verse for that. Give me a Bible verse for that, sinner. Give me a Bible verse for that. Your day, judgment is coming. That is for him, not you. Says who? Says who? Says who? Says who, sinner? Where? 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 Where does he say that? The day will come for the record to be judged. Right? You are not God. I didn't say it was God. But where does he say I can't judge? First Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 6. Read it. First Corinthians 6 does not tell you that you can judge people. Actually, says saints will judge the world. God did not tell you that you can judge people. I am. I am. Saints will judge the world. I'm a saint. I'm a saint of God. I'm a saint of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6 that saints will judge the world. Your point is defeated. It is crushed. It is destroyed. Yes, really. That's simple. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15 says the spiritual man judges all things and he himself is rightly judged by no man. Deal with it. Deal with it. John 7 24. Jesus said, when you judge, Judge with righteous judgment, talking to humans. Deal with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. You don't have the word of God on your side, sinner. You don't have the word of God on your side. It's a problem. You're a false God. You've made up in your own mind. You serve him. Listen to your potty mouth. How old are you? Your potty mouth and a sewer heart. Hold on. How old are you? My age means nothing. No, it doesn't. If you come as our father and our mother, you'll live long as me. So how old are you? It is not your job. You sit up and rest. Because who knows God will take your life to take your job. I'm ready. You're not. I'm ready. Are you making a judgment on me? I am. You you hypocrite. You hypocrite. No, I'm not. Because according to the Bible, judgment is not wrong. But you're not Jesus. I didn't say I was. I didn't say I was. No, I didn't say it. Only according to your false ideas. Only according to your false ideas have I sinned. Not according to the Bible. Yeah. What'd you say? <laughs> no, you haven't. Yes, I have. You do not realize this. My father literally is a pastor. He can't tell me something I don't know. It literally doesn't matter. That doesn't save you. That doesn't save you. My entire name is Holy. My entire name means a leader. A born leader. Leader to hell. Leader to hell. Leader to follow the devil. That's you. Moses led the people of Jesus Christ to safety. Moses followed in the steps of Jesus Christ. So you're going to tell me that I'm going to hell. That's right. No, no, no. I follow Jesus Christ. You don't follow him. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I lead in Jesus Christ's honor. No. You do not do. Are you still sitting? 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 You're not following Jesus if you're sitting. So tell me, tell me. Please explain to me. Please explain to me. Does Jesus Christ lead you to sin? Does he lead you to sin? Does he lead you to sin? Yes or no? Yeah, see, you won't answer the question. You don't have an answer. You know, you called Jesus Christ a hypocrite a little while ago. I don't follow your Jesus. I, I agree with that. Amen. That's the first true thing you said all day. That's the first true thing you said today. You don't follow my Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible. You follow the hypocrite Jesus. You follow the hypocrite Jesus. And you follow. If Jesus, no, no, no. If Jesus didn't love everybody, they wouldn't Look, be living today. Somebody who actually wants you here and ask If Jesus didn't love everybody, everybody they wouldn't be living. Nobody happy. Y'all are hurt. That's Jesus true. would not be happy with everybody. Sir, I have a question. When well, you hurt people, you so, hurt people. So, tell me. You can't 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 tell me. You can't
A fake Hebrew Israelite is someone who claims to be a true Israelite based upon their skin color. That's who they are. Have you ever yeah. Have you ever been baptized? Yep. How many times? Once. And, and, and what, does that, what does that commandment say? Once you take that, once you go to the Oh, I see. You're a one that's Pentecostal. No, I'm not. It don't matter. I'm a Christian. You're a Jesus only guy. I'm a what? Baptized in Jesus' name only? No. I was raised in the Baptist church. Oh. So, yeah, don't go there. So, what, what was said about you when you baptized? When you baptized? I'm asking you first. You haven't answered my question. I can't answer your question until you answer my question. No, I've asked you lots of questions. You don't answer any of them. You can't answer my question until you answer my question. See, you can't answer that question because you don't remember. And it tells you. I don't remember. Tell me it is. How do you know that? You can ask the question. Oh, I could. No, you could. I could. By searching it up, but you don't know it by heart. What's that? You don't know it by heart. Don't know what by heart? I didn't take any oaths. I have taken no oaths. God commands you not to take any oaths. Pastor reads off of you God's word and what he wants you to do. Well, there is. And you have not followed that in any kind of way. Do you know? Do you know what they? How do you know what you're talking about? You know, but you go ahead and explain. Go ahead and explain. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Go ahead and explain. Don't know the right process of baptism. Yes or no? How can you be a pastor and not know the right process of baptism? You're making a lot of assumptions right now. Okay. Which means you're you're lying about me. You're lying about me. Who said I wasn't? Yourself. I never said that. Every pastor knows how to recite God's words for baptism. Uh huh. But listen, if you got baptized and you didn't repent, all you became was a wet sinner. That's it. Well, yeah, you still are. Well, you're, you're the one that said Jesus Christ is a hypocrite for judging. Jesus Christ, is he a hypocrite for judging people? Oh, so then you're going to hell. You have no hope. You have no hope that Jesus Christ is a sinner. He's a hypocrite, though. A hypocrite is a sinner. So Jesus Christ, Gordon, you're a sinner. Huh? What? So you call So, so you give me a hypocrite and not be a sinner? No. The delusion in your mind and your heart is so strong, young man. It's done you no good to be raised in the church. That is coming out of his mouth. It's sadness to Jesus Christ. I'm surprised God has not made clouds form up this area right now. I'm so scared. I'm so scared. You should be scared of the Lord. I fear God, not you, sinner. Not your, not your false God. Not the God doesn't exist in your mind. I do fear God. I don't fear you, though. Bring it on. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Is that a judgment? Oh, so you're a hypocrite now. You're going to hell. You're going to hell for judging me now. If it was meant for God to send me to hell, I would have taken my life right now and sent me to hell. That's not true. Guess what? That's just you're saying everything. Okay, so let me reverse that. If it was God's will to send me to hell, he would have done it by now, so I guess I'm not going there. But you just said. It makes no sense, young man. Your day's coming. Your day's coming. What's that? Not me. No, I follow Jesus Christ. He doesn't lead me to sin. He doesn't lead me to hell. That's right. That's right. Jesus Christ leads you to sin? No, I'm not. By what? By what? Judging? By judging? Prove it. You're you're the epitome. You're the epitome of Isaiah 520, young man. You're the epitome of it. You call evil good and good evil. You call the word of God the word of Satan. Shame on you. You know what? This is a fact that the take the word of God himself and twist it into their own meaning. The right meaning they don't even have no clue about. I'm telling you right now. What's your, have you, ever, you mean like Psalm 5-5? Psalm 5-5, where it says that he hates unbelievers? 
Rogers, he ain't so wicked, and you say he doesn't? You mean like that? You mean like that? Where, where God says he hates the workers and iniquity, you say he doesn't? That you talking about? Or like when Jesus Christ said, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, and you say we can't be perfect? You mean like that? You mean like that? You mean like that? When, when God calls, said he hates sinners, when God said he hates sinners, you say no, he doesn't? You don't want to trust God's word, young man. No, that wasn't enough. Now you're lying. Now you're lying about me again. Like when God says, I hate sinners, and you say no? Like when Jesus Christ said, be perfect, you said we can't be perfect? Nope, not going anywhere, sinner. Well, guess what? Across the map, I'll be out of here. You will be as far as I'll be from the field. No, that's not true. Oh, really? Read the sign right here. That's true. What does that sign say? What does it mean? I'll be here. I'll be here. That sign says, I'll be here. I can't read. Another judgment. I can't read. Another judgment. No judgment. Hypocrites. Bring it on. Bring it on, sinner. Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. The Bible says. I hope you have a good attorney by repenting of your sins and actually following the Jesus of the Bible, not the fake Jesus you've been taught and you made up in your mind. You want to pray for us? Before you leave this place today, I hope God raised his hand on you. Be my judge for the judgment you pronounce will be judged. With the Are you saying I'm in sin? Well, if we all sit our day, what's the problem? If we all sit our day and I can't help it, what's the problem then? Why are you being so hard on me? If I can't help it, why are you being so hard on me? In Christ, yeah, I am. I'm saying if I am a sinner like you're saying I am, then what's the problem? What's the problem? What's the big deal? Why are you being so hard on me? Because you're wrong. I'm not a sinner. I'm not a sinner. You're wrong. I'm not a sinner. You're wrong. I didn't change anything. I didn't change anything. But you're not consistent. You you don't really believe what I believe. That's the problem. It doesn't make him go away. It doesn't make him go away because you don't believe him. And it doesn't make you anyway. And I can ask you. You're accusing me of being a hypocrite. Young man, your Jesus Christ doesn't exist. Yours doesn't exist. He's not your savior. He's not your Lord. He doesn't exist. The Jesus Christ of your mind does not exist. Not your Jesus, no. The figment of your imagination. Young lady, young lady, don't run away. Are you judging us right now by saying judge? I'm not judging y'all. Okay. I'm asking, why are y'all judging me? Hold on, I'm going to break down your logic. They repent. They repent. I'm going to break down your they logic. They repent. Just let them down your logic. They're not repenting. They didn't believe in our God. They're not repenting. They're not repenting. They didn't believe in our God. Right here. He doesn't believe in our God. See? So she's not repenting. You're a liar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, why are you bringing that up? It is, bro. We don't have a problem with judgment according to the Bible, the biblical judgment, okay? But you keep saying we're judging and I can go to McDonald's every day. It doesn't make me a hamburger. You didn't get it. It went over your head, man. I said, go teach me your way.
Are you ready before, Senator? Remember? You ready before? And they denied what it said. They denied what it said. Psalm 5 5. The foolish, the foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Keep reading. Thou shalt destroy them that speak these things. The Lord will abhor the bloody and the people men. You want me to keep reading? Okay. <laughs> he, doesn't hate, he doesn't hate him, though, bro. He doesn't hate him. He doesn't abhor him. He doesn't hate him. Even though the Bible says that, it doesn't believe that. But we're preaching a false God, not you. Right? Me further reading that, just, it's further condemnation in the wicked. Why did you cut it off? Why did you get his reading here? I can keep reading it, but it's just going to further condemn. It's going to show you it's gonna show the condemnation of the unbelievers. I, I don't mind reading it. So, what does Psalm 5-5 say? What does Psalm 5-5 say? What does Psalm 5-5 say? Twister. 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 The word says what it says. You don't believe it. Oh, really? Okay. 
You can lie about me if you want. Because I know both pastors have a degree in public sociology or religious studies. He finally, he finally have either. Does that make someone a pastor? Where do you find that in the Bible? 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 I'm not saying you. Okay, I'm asking you the law. You know what it says in Titus 2? I'm sorry. I'm asking you the law. What about the law? You know Christ came to fulfill the law? I'm asking you the law. Are you in violation of the law? I'm asking you the law. I'm not gonna this, so, oh, oh, so, that, so that, that trumps this? That trumps this? Oh man. You're foolish, man. You're foolish. Thank you. If anybody is So, so, you, 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 you stating that is saying that the law trumps God's word. I'm foolish. I, no, I'm saying you're foolish because you're putting God's, uh, you're putting God's law beneath man's law. You, you didn't hear what I just said. You didn't hear what I said. Thank you. I don't want the law. Maybe you'll be you know, appreciated by people in this world. My past has been lost Hey, the, the ironic thing, bro, is I have a degree. <laughs> I really didn't even have to say that. I, I wasn't even going to bother because it matters not. Yeah, I'm not exactly. glorying in myself Amen, bro. and in my education. Amen, bro. Titus 1 and 1 Timothy 3 talk about what makes someone a pastor. Exactly. Yeah. Did he claim to be a Christian? Yeah, he his father was a pastor. Hey, so wait, okay. you, have some, you, have hey, you, you have something against pedophiles? You have something against pedophiles? Yes, yes. What standard do you use? No, wait, what standard do you use to say what you're doing is wrong? Yeah, they don't want to get it, bro. So says the potty mouth. So says the potty mouth. Okay, potty mouth. Okay, potty mouth. Whatever you say, potty mouth. Whatever you say, hypocrite. Yeah, is the law always right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because the law used to condemn sodomy. Yeah, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. You know, it's like... Or even in America, bro, the law condemns sodomy. And she's, I think she's a lesbian, if I'm not right, but... So. Even though I did that... Oh, yeah, you have adultery on there, don't you? Isn't that part of the Ten Commandments? Yeah, we're so crazy. Y'all are literally pulling all the fuck with the fuck and all the fuck with the Ten Adulterers. Murder. Yeah. Like, the... the yeah, why is it all part of the Ten Commandments? Part of the Ten Commandments. Part of the Ten Commandments. Part of the Ten Commandments. No, it's not. God, God went and tied it. No, it's not. What's the law? Oh, 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 oh,
You sure are being negative towards us. You sure are being negative towards us. Let's say, let's say you were one of those on there. Stop killing my, stop killing my positive vibes, man. And that's why we're out here to say that you don't have to know. But, but, the, but the truth of the matter is that many people hate, hate light and love darkness. Light, it's Jesus Christ. But you know? anything that exposes sin. But darkness is sin. Teaching us, I don't know what God does. Teaching us that we are in God. And worldly love, love you the faith of the God that right follows right 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 you with right right your sin and follows you as right. So what do I do right now? The grace of God. Are you sorry for all your sin? Are you sorry for all your sin? Do you understand that you're a sinner on your way to hell? Looking for that blessed hope and the glory of the Spirit. in your heart and proud of God for mercy. So even though we're in a world, but if you're mocking, you're not going to hear it. Wait, no. I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying. If you're genuinely sorrowful in your heart over your sin, you're broken over your sin, repent to God, cry out in prayer, cry out in prayer, receive every man to all give it to his soul, to his son, Jesus Christ, follow him every day. Die to yourself and follow him. The Bible is what the devil is about to try to do. That's all I'm saying. So when people say, oh, we're all, we're all good, 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 we are all good we are all good we are all good we are all the Bible that that Judaism and Christianity share the same religious foundation. Okay, I'm, I'm talking about Jesus. Why, why are you against Jesus? Why are you against Jesus? I'm just stating the facts. Because those are the two religions, they're both Abrahamic religions, we all share the same pictures, we have different outskirts, the same. Why do you, why are you against Jesus? When I say I was against Jesus, your actions prove it. No, you said, did I say? My answer, I say nothing. I said, why are you against Jesus? I never said I'm against Jesus. Do you, do you believe your actions can prove what your heart, what your heart feels? Right. 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 I am a Christian. Oh, I believe so in God. But I'm also saying. Oh, hold on. 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 Are you listening? That he, he, on the way to all, the 12 steps, and the heaven's soul on the same side. I'm not saying that those different religions. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm talking about you, though. When I let her speak, let her speak. Keep doing this. I'm saying it's very bold to include somebody who starts to say the same thing. He's trying to run. Stop running. Stop running. The Bible says, the Bible, the Bible says, this is for you professing believers that are still a sinner. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 21, it says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have I not talked you want to listen to this because this is very true. Listen. Many, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in, in your name and cast out devils in your name and in your name have done many wonderful works? 
and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So anyone who claims to be a Christian and is living in sin, that's speaking to that. So Jesus Christ was very serious about sin, and if you're a sinner, you're on your way to hell. But the hope, 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 are you a sinner? Yeah, they, Are you a sinner? Three, three so the they, okay, 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 we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that. Think about this. But not for criminals. Okay. That's all okay. I'm saying. Okay. So, right so, so, so Muslims and Christians are the same guy? I'm saying that we started in the same beginning. So that's why I'm okay. saying that's a phone. Okay. I'm going to say this for you. So, so, so do we start the same guy? Yeah, why do you think you're above everybody else? What? And why is Judaism not on board? Look at your son. Dude, so that's saying I'm above everyone? He's turn around and look. Like, Does the Bible say that? Does the Bible say that? No, you guys just show you're above everybody else. Look at your son. Y'all don't know what you're Does the Bible say this? Y'all don't know what you're saying. 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 You're dripping, man. You're dripping. We are here job, you. You are. The only person who's supposed to judge is God. Don't judge the doing that. He's not to the earth. You're not treating the sinners this way. You never treat the sinners this way. That's the one thing you're not supposed to do is judge other people. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Okay, so listen. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. See, he says to not be deceived. They see snatchers. Don't snatch the word of God. Don't snatch the word of God. The Bible says that to not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor feminine, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, which is homosexuals, nor, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So if you're on that list, you need to repent. You need to get right with God. You, ask, you, you say that this is not in the Bible, so I showed you. And Galatians 5, 19 through 22 also says the same thing. And Revelation 21, 8. You can mock all you want. The Bible says God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. You, you can mock us. You, you can mock us all you want, but you can't mock God. You cannot judge other people. You're judging me. Are you judging me? Yeah, that's the judgment. What's the judgment? Are you what you, what you just said. You giving your opinion is a judgment. You're not supposed to be screaming this at us. The word says. We're, we're, we're preaching the word of God. You're not doing the stuff that God would have wanted you to do. Where do you, where do you find, where do you find what God wanted you to do? God said to make a few crosses. When Jesus, Jesus is the living example. You said the actions show your, show what you actually believe in. So when Jesus was with the sinners, when he was with Mary Magdalene, when he rose Lazarus from the dead, even though he was a sinner, Jesus' actions showed what he believed in. And he believed in love and prosperity for all. But what you're doing, condemning people to hell, people you don't even know, and you're smiling right now, which is so sick and twisted. No, it's you're taking it's the Bible and misconstruing it for your own reading. Because that's a false doctrine. That's a false doctrine. What? It's a fucking Bible. The Bible what, what you're saying. says that Jesus hangs with sinners. Okay, so Jesus did not sin with sinners. What is that? He did not have a time to pay your sins. He did not pay your sins. We don't even say it. Okay, so, okay, so, the, uh, God did hang with sinners, but he also changed them, too. Okay, so, I'm glad he said that. He sat down with sinners that wanted to change. That was, that was He never said that they came to hell. He didn't take down with sinners. He didn't take down with sinners. He was right in hell forever. The, the fact that y'all are out here doing this, this is not right. It's and I'll show you the Bible. I'll show you the Bible. You know the Bible? You're a sister of the word. God didn't walk around on the side with no witness, with no 12 disciples telling them this. He just left the word out for them. He left the word out for them. They wanted to take it. They could take him all that. And when Peter denied him three times, he loved him back ten times more. Exactly. Jesus loved the people who even betrayed him. He loved Judas beside him. The Bible says in Titus this Wait, is for you. Me. God, help it. it says, but after due time, Peter manifest three times. He denied him. Jesus came. Okay, can he listen? Can he listen? When Jesus died, but he still loves the same. Can he listen? 
Can you listen? You're very angry. Titus 1 3. Adam, shut your ass. It says, hey, man. It Chill. says, but half in due time. Potty this is mouth. for you. I'm an, oh, but half in due time manifested his word. Manifested his word through preaching. Through preaching. Okay, Jude verse this is preaching. That's exactly what we're doing. That's exactly what we're heralding our voices. And it didn't do you no good, man. See, now you're twisting the word. You're twisting the word. That's exactly what it is. Uh, what faith do you have? Yeah, you have faith in God. Okay, so if you have no word, okay. so you, you have you have you have a dead faith. <laughs> Okay, it says, when I gave all diligence, that is preaching the word. So tell, tell me what preaching the word is. Tell me what preaching the word is. Okay, can you tell me what preaching the word is? Can you answer the question, sir? Sir? Hey, can you answer the question? What? You're dodging. You're dodging. So we're anti-Christ? Yeah. So, okay, where do you find that? What's anti-Christ about this? It's kind of Lord God and our Lord Jesus. No, we're not Calvin. <laughs> we're not Calvin. <laughs> no, what, what's Calvinism about this? What's Calvinism about it? The whole setup. What do you mean? Okay, spe specify. It's okay, God forgives you. Everybody's a sinner. Uh, so you know what Calvinism is? No, I, know, I know exactly what it is. Okay, so you remember the whole fucking angry God thing, right? Yeah, so is God a God of wrath? You remember the whole angry God? In the temperate, you know what I'm talking about. I know you know what I'm talking about. Look at what he did. Just because Jonathan Edwards preached a sermon called Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God does not mean, does not, no, it is not. Calvinism is, is expressed with the acronym TULIP. We don't believe in any of those letters. I'm, a, I'm one of the most against Calvinist people in the whole world. Huh? You and I and him had a discussion. We were standing right there, and I brought up Calvinism. Uh huh. We all agree on the definition of Calvinism. It's the same thing I just said. Absolutely not. One hundred percent. Can I go back and watch the video again? Go back and watch the video, man. Go back and watch the video. The whole thing's up there, man. I talked to a Calvinist pastor. Listen, listen. I talked to a Cal listen, listen. I talked to a Calvinist pastor right here last time. Right there. Last time I was here, I talked to a Calvinist pastor, and I told him that he was false. I told him he was a liar. I refuted his doctrines. Calvinist pastor, last time. Yeah, I said pastor. P A S T O R. Pastor. Right here, last time. At the end of the video, watch it for yourself, man. Go to the end of the video, you see a, a white guy right here and a white guy standing next to him. They're both Calvinists. I went back and forth and for 30 minutes. Jonathan Edwards. So so your 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 assumption is that God being a wrathful God equals Calvinism. That's nowhere found in Calvinism that, that they are exclusive to that teaching, okay? People all throughout centuries, from the beginning of Jesus and the disciples, believe that God is a God of wrath. It doesn't do with Calvinism. You understand? Roman Catholics believe in the Trinity. Doesn't make me a Roman Catholic for believing in the Trinity. So it's a non sequitur. It does not follow. It does not follow. <laughs> what point were you making? I gotta love it. Wait, did you claim to be a Christian? Are you a Christian? You hear that, bro? Y'all too racially minded. Shut up, you straight white man. You have a 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 straight white man. You
Isaiah 520 over and over and over again. I don't think I've been through campus just to see in a very long time. Oh, you just really. curse God. Seriously. Seriously. Okay. That's, That's your fruit bro. that you hate, God. I mean, it's getting worse, but I mean, this is really bad. I know there's someone that has to this Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I can't do that. On the pink shirt? But you're accusing us of being blind. You would be upset, wouldn't you? You're accusing us of being blind and you're putting us in that system. That's what I'm talking about. I can't even hear what you're saying. Well, because of what's coming out of your mouth, your filthy mouth. Yeah, you are being blind. No. Yes, you are. If I was blind, I'd be like you. Again, I can't I'd be like you. But you say you see, but you still remain. I'm reading the Bible. This is Jesus. This is God's word. You're applying it wrongly. You're applying it longly. I never said I was a prophet. I'm just reading what God has said. You're not essentially calling God blind. You know the Bible says that we should have blessed a man that doesn't abide in the counsel of the ungodly. So we don't listen to you. We don't listen to you. Why are you here? I thought the Bible didn't mean that. Yeah, that's what the Bible didn't mean anything. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. No, I didn't say the Bible didn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. Hold on. I said that doesn't mean anything because you're misapplying it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. You're accusing us of being blind when yes, really you're the blind one. So you're trying to appropriate yeah, us to that scripture, and that's a false accusation. I never said I was blind. I was reading from the Bible, sir. And then you applied it to us falsely. Yeah. Then you falsely applied it to us. You can look it up. You can look it up. When I'm ready. You're reading it to your own shame. You're reading the Bible. Have we prophesied today? Have we prophesied today? What have I prophesied today? I didn't, I didn't call anybody a false prophet. No one here has prophesied that I'm aware of. Jesus said, out of the heart the mouth speaks, and cursing is coming out of your mouth, and wickedness. That's how I know you're not a child. Are you perfect? Absolutely, Christ, yes. You sound dumb. You don't understand that you are perfect. You are no better than me. In Christ. Well, I didn't say I was better than you. I'm better off than you because of Jesus. Well, I'm not better than you. You can have the same thing I have in Christ, but you refuse it. And you choose your sin as well. Sir, what do you have that I don't? Jesus. That's right. And Eternal life, spirit. forgiveness of sins, telling you to a clean conscience. Turn to Jesus. Not this fake churchianity, Jesus, that you think you have. Oh, wow. Look at your life, bro. Look at your life. Jesus said you shall know them by their fruit. Is the fruit in your life sin or holiness? Is it righteousness or is it wickedness? What's coming out of your mouth? Is it cursing? Is it blasphemy? Or is it love? Is it joy, peace? Is it truth? That's how you can tell if you're a real sinner. Doesn't matter. There's a lot of churches that are lost, brother. I have a lot of churches that are lost. Thousands of times. I've been saved by the time you actually. Doesn't matter. What does it matter? Doesn't matter if you go to church your whole life. Doesn't matter. I could sleep in a barn my whole life. Doesn't make me a horse. Any more than you sleep in church makes you a Christian. Good. Good. I believe in Jesus. That's not what he says. Out of your heart, dude, you don't have people. Like, oh, you don't need these guys. You don't need these guys. Oh, 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 o
Well, it's because your mind is cloudy. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You're blinded by your sin. You talk about how you must be a Of course. Of course. Of course. I said, of course. Of course. I was wicked. I was wicked. What matters my morals are a lot stronger than yours. Okay, well, you should believe it earlier. I don't preach hate to them. I protect these people. Oh, really? Yeah, I do. Oh, you believe a homosexual is going to make you the kingdom of God as a homosexual? Yeah. <laughs> You're a liar. Right. And you don't love them. You don't love them. What would you know about gay? What would you know about being gay? You, you hate homosexuals. You know you know you know you know you know That's you right. That's right. That's right. What would you know about being gay? I love rejoice. What would you know? I'm very gay. Gay means happy. But you're right. I know nothing about being a sodomite. That does not preclude me from judging it. That means happy. You're a homosexual. You personally. Don't take you know the rainbow. The rainbow too. It's God's covenant with man. It has seven colors, not six like the gay flag. Let me let me hold him back with my pinky. Get home back with my pinky. Right, he might do something. But I do love the truth. And what does that take you? The truth is they need to repent of their sins. They repent so they don't go to hell. Thank you. Both. Both. No one here is scared of homosexuals, by the way. Oh, here comes a, here comes a fake Christian. Yeah. He might have, I don't know. Don't let it know. He probably knows like four or five Bible verses. You know? What are you saying? What do you want? Excuse me, I'm talking to the man. I'm, I'm telling you what he what, said. What, 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 what do you want? Everything. This here. Like this means nothing. What, 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 what does that cross mean around your neck, young man? Oh, it means everything. What does it mean? It means everything. Like what? What do you mean, like what? Do you have a right to question my belief? I sure do. No, you don't? Yeah, I do. You don't? Who are you to if you, Wait a minute. Did you, did you just come here and question our beliefs, young man? If you, you just came here to question our beliefs, right? Word of God, that means that you do not judge anyone for their beliefs. Wait a minute now. Didn't you come here to judge us? No. Then why are you... Then what are you doing? Give me proof of what you believe? That's what I can That's a judgment. It's a judgment. Hypocrite. You got a log in your eye. A log in your eye. Hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. You just said homosexuals go to hell. You just said homosexuals go to hell. You way out of conversation. You way out of conversation. Bro, you just said judgment is wrong, and yet you just judge us. You're a hypocrite. I said I came to see foolish. Okay, so. That's a judgment. This? Yeah. You don't know what Japanese is. There are no sinners in the kingdom of God. Right. Only ex sinners. And? What did that say that in the Bible? What did I say about? Show me where you're perfect at. Verbatim. Show me where you're perfect at. And then you can prove to me that you truly are a Christian. If you can show me that you're perfect, then you prove to me that you're a Christian. 
I'm getting tired of seeing the intrusion out here every single week. Yes. Well, it ain't us every single week. We've been here twice. Second time ever. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Uh -huh. Be not deceived, either fornicators, uh -huh. idolaters, adulterers, or effeminate, which are men that want to be women, nor abusers of themselves and mankind, which are sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And you know what Paul goes on to say? And such were Past tense. some of you. Past tense. Were, listen, some of you, but ye are washed. You are sanctified, are you but you are justified are you in the name of the Lord Jesus like and by the Spirit of our God. There's your proof of being ex right there. No, that's not my proof. Oh, see. <laughs> he doesn't want to hear the word of God. That's right. Oh, okay. no, I know the word. I'll show you where else. No, obviously you don't. Oh, yeah, I obviously you don't. This. How are you saying this? This ain't it. No. Is this really the way you think that this is the right way to go about trying to get people to believe in God? The word of God? Is this the right way to go about you trying to get people to believe in God? Can you ask me a question? Is more this the, the right no, way so to go about right. trying to get people to believe in God? Romans chapter 10, young man. Is this the right yes, way? No. You don't want to hear the Bible. No, answer no. me. Yes, I don't want you to hear no. I don't have yes, to answer. No. You can answer me. Yes, or no. Yes, or no. Yes, or no. Yes. Yes. Romans 10. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. There's the Word of God, young man. And if you don't recognize it, if you don't recognize it, you're deceived. No, if you don't recognize it as the Word of God, I don't have any sin. No. Nope. I gave it to Jesus a long time ago. Why? Well, I, I, I walk with Jesus. I answered your question. Day perfect. Yes or no? I wake. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Beware a hypocrite who the world loves. Woe unto you when the whole world speaks well of you, sinner. How about Colossians 1? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Can we preach? You don't like the Bible, period. People that try to turn the word to fit their own prescription, fit their own description. Like you're doing. I haven't heard you say one thing about the word of God. Giving you any word. That's right. I agree with that. Judging is wrong. Foolishness? Yeah, foolishness. The Bible says, "Be not foolish." So the word of God is foolish. The word of God is foolish. Since you want to quote the Bible, the Bible says, "Be not foolish." Show it to me in the Bible. Pick it up. I don't have to prove myself to you, sir. Okay, there we go. I don't prove myself to you either, then. Right? Let's turn it around. I'll prove myself to you either. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't have to prove myself to you, right? 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 Oh. It doesn't work, does it? It doesn't work, does it? Hey, no one's shaming you down. You're wasting your own time by standing there. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away. Walk away, all of you. Go away. Oh, you won't go away. Why won't you go away? Why won't you go away? Because the word of God's dealing with you. That's why. Can you spell? Go get a job. I have a job, sinner. Where's your job? Where's your job? Where's your job? Do you have a job? Do you have a job? Go get a job. Go get a job. Go get a job. Oh, you don't have a job. You don't have a job. Then why are you here? Then why are you here if you have a job? Why are you here if you have a job? Why are you here if you have a job? I'm getting some education today. You're right. You're right. Listen to you. Hey man, keep keep letting the world love you. You're, you're paving the broad way into hell for everybody here. What's your point? I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him. I'm talking to him, not you. Shut up. You have nothing to say to me. Really? How do you know that? Oh, so you don't know that. Now you're a liar. None of your business. You know why? You know why? Because it matters not. If what I'm saying is the truth, it matters not whether I have a PhD or nothing at all. If what I'm saying is the truth, that's all that matters. Sir, the truth is the truth. You can't read it right.
right. And when you stand before a guy, you say, God, I have my bachelor's degree. Say, so you know what? Doesn't matter. I have my master's degree. Well, doesn't matter. It won't get you into God's kingdom. I have a PhD. Not going to get you into God's kingdom. You need to repent, believe the gospel, and follow Jesus. Your, your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, and your PhD will go to hell with you. You see, that's the carnal mind. You have to be paid to do this, right? That's your carnal mind. You can't have a job, you're out here. That's the carnal mind. You don't have a degree, you're out here. That's the carnal mind. The carnal mind. Carnal mind. Carnal mind. Over and over again. None of your business. No. Irrelevant. You don't know the word of God. You don't know the word of God. You know all the deception of the devil, but you don't know the word of God, that's for sure. My degree or not means nothing. My, my qualification to preach comes from God in Titus chapter 1 and 1 Timothy chapter 3. I, I'll leave you like you are. No. Believe what you want about me. I don't care. No. I, I mean nothing. I mean nothing. Where does it say that in the Bible? Thank you. Read Titus 2. Read Titus 2. Do you have a seminary degree? Did John, did uh, Timothy, did any of them have seminary degrees? What about Jesus? What about Jesus? Did you do this? No, no, no. Not one stood up and yelled at the crowd to them that they were going to John the Baptist? John the Baptist? What you're doing is turning people away from the love of Christ. No, you are. You're telling them they can keep being sinners. No, I'm telling them to find their own way. You hypocrite. I'm not sorry, you hypocrite. You wicked devil. <laughs> you think you can help us and you're not a Christian? This you love the world. You love the praise. You're not helping the world. anyone. You're ashamed of the name How of the world. Why are you talking about it? That he will be ashamed of you in that day. In that day. That's not for you to know. Because you're not helping the world. You're ashamed of the world. You're ashamed of Jesus. These are the nicest people I've ever met. They tell them they're on the way to hell. You didn't love them. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's for a little bit. In the shade. Ah, that's good. Because you told them a lie. How many times in the Bible is hate mentioned by God? You hate the word. Does God hate us? Does God hate us or love us? Yeah. Does God hate us or love us? Let me ask you a question. Does God hate us or love us? Is a homosexual going to go to hell? Do you like us?
Take that cross off your neck. Take it off your neck. You're not a you're not a representative of the You just blaspheme God. You said he put sin in the world, liar. That's anti-Christ. You're an anti-Christ. Yes, you are. You're calling God the author of sin when you're a sinner. That's wicked. Not God. God didn't create sin. God not create everything. He didn't create sin. So he did not create everything. The Bible says that sin entered into the world through Adam, not God. Who did God create? Adam! And he had a free will choice. And he put the perfect. And he commanded Adam not to eat of the tree of good and good and evil. And what did Adam do? What did Adam do? What did Adam do? Why did God create you? Why did God put the Are you saying that God created sin? Yes! Wow! Wow! Why don't you go ask the preacher back there if God created sin? Go ask him. Go ask him. Ask him if God created sin. Go ask him. Doesn't God do everything for a reason though? Adam, ask me. I'm not talking to you. You're stupid. Doesn't God do everything for a reason? Does God not do everything for a reason? Oh, now it's breaking. So God just does things and things that come. You don't know God, so I can't do it. Well, talking about, does he do everything you're a fool? Does he do everything for a reason or not? Does he? Adam, does he? Can we use that answer? Does God do everything for a reason?
God, God, listen to this little preacher. Straight from the mouth of God. He's got his wet. Straight from the mouth of Jesus Christ. When asked what is the most great commandment, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. You better read the entire law and demands a great it's not telling yeah, each other we're going you. to hell. It's telling one another that there is a way out of hell and that this is Let not the way to go. Hey, 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 if we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living the truth. But if we confess our sin to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all the wickedness. If we claim we have not sinned, we are calling God a liar and showing that a God has no sin to us. Long story short, all you have to do is sit here and answer. He's a whole chapter. I read the whole chapter. I didn't even know it. Read it out loud. Read it out loud. Read it out loud. The whole chapter. Back it up. Don't do the same. Read the whole chapter. I have read the whole chapter. Do it now. Sit down. Because you just said you are repentant and said you're going to help. But you did not help. He won't read the whole chapter. You're a hypocrite and a coward. You fear man. The fear of man brings a snare. Whenever trust in the Lord shall be saved. You fear man. I do trust him. You don't fear God. I trust him. He has everything to have received by you. So I had a chance to tell these people no. you don't. You're lying to them, sinner. You're lying to them. You got a good pat on your back from the world. Woe well unto you when the whole world speaks well of you, sinner. Woe well unto you when the whole world speaks well of you. You got a pat in your back, but your ang God's angry with you for your wickedness. It sounds good for your sinful ears. Yeah. Let me keep my honey off it. He don't honor what he's doing. He doesn't honor it. He doesn't honor it. All those bad ones are not a little one. You're not a little one. You're not a little one. You're corrupted. You're defiled. You've gone astray. You're not a little one any longer. Fuck these guys. <laughs> fuck you. Keep the Lord's name out your fucking mouth. <laughs> <laughs> y'all look real disappointed right now. Is this not what y'all wanted? I <laughs> like some real pussies right now. Y'all are some clowns. I just let you make yourself look like this. You're a hypocrite. Read that sign, sir. That's Young man, young man, young man. Do you know anything about pedophiles? Do you? No. No. Do you know? Do you know anything about them? Don't hold them back. Do you know anything about them? Have you ever been a pedophile yourself? Have you ever been a pedophile yourself? Have you ever been a pedophile yourself? Oh, we're sh we're shaking in our boots, dude. Shaking in our boots. We're so scared. Give me a break. I've had guns pulled on me, knives pulled on me, all that kind of stuff. That man right there makes me scared. Say again? Am I denying what? Well, God will only protect you if you're following him. 
If you're not obeying him and keep his commandments, if you're walking in sin daily, you don't have the protection of God. You have the wrath of God upon you. You're actually in the very worst place you could possibly be in. You have no favor, no grace, no salvation, no forgiveness if you're walking in sin. So only those who are actually walking with Jesus have that favor bestowed upon them. Okay, that's fine, but I'm saying the Holy Spirit's convicting you to come out of your sin. how about you go to college? I have been to college. No, you have not. I graduated. I graduated. I'm one of y'all. I'm one of y'all. I'm one of y'all. I'm one of y'all. You're just lying about us now, man. Wow! Just go listen to the fake Christians that'll pat your back and tell you God loves you in your sin, and so you'll find out on the day of judgment whether you're going to hell or not. You'll realize that we really do love you, and you got to repent of your homosexuality to be here and pray for all of your sins. God won't even pay us your prayers. The Bible says he doesn't hear sinners. Say, when you pray, do not pray on the corner, but to be seen by people, but go into your private place and pray. You pray to be seen by people. You pray in the street corner to be seen by men. You're a hypocrite. And God does not hear the prayers of sinners. God does not hear the prayers of sinners. God doesn't regard your sin, your prayer. If you regard iniquity in your heart, the Lord will not hear your prayer. You're in trouble. God's not paying us your prayers from a wicked heart with a wicked mind and wicked mouth. God rejects your prayers until you repent and give up your sins and actually follow him in obedience and holiness. That's what he commands of you. Yeah, let's go. This is Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5. Bye. When you pray, do not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. That's right. That they may be seen of men. That's the word. I say to you, they have their reward. That's the word. That's the word. And when you have entered into your closet, thought you guys were leaving. So that your father who thought you were leaving shall reward you openly. Why are you still here? Jesus said, You hypocrites have your reward. Praying in the open. Nope. No, we're not. No, we're not. Well, well, well he, I've talked to him for quite a bit today, actually. He confesses it himself, number one. He confesses it himself, number one. Number two, he claimed. Number two, he claimed Jesus Christ is a hypocrite, so he has no hope of salvation. If Jesus is a sinner, he has no hope of salvation. No. No. No, I didn't say that. I've sinned tens of thousands of times in my life. But I've repented of my sin. That's right. Well, now you're talking about the past again. I can't, well, number one, number one, I can't tell the future, so I don't know what's going to happen in the future. That's exactly right. I didn't got it. Judging is not a sin. Says who? Where? 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 Where does God say judging is sin? And if it's a sin, you're judging us too, so you're a sinner as well. I never said I wasn't a sinner. If judging is sin, then God's the biggest sinner in the whole world. If, if judging is a sin, then God's the biggest sinner in the whole world. No, no. I called your God a sinner, not my God. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. Oh, okay, so that is right. John 8, 44. You're of your father the devil. That's not our God. You're calling my father the devil? That's right. The one in heaven? That's not the one in heaven. Jesus called the Jews in chapter 8 that said that they believed in him but walked as sinners. Okay, get off your book of the devil. That, that is why like, all that, that's all that you know. Well, well yeah. don't read it for yourself, man. No, that's John book chapter book. 8. You, know. you don't want to hear the word. My God. That Your God's the devil. Oh, oh, okay, you got a book of Mormon. That's the book of Mormon. That is the book of Mormon. Book of Mormon. <laughs> that's the Bible, man. I've never been called a Mormon before. Yeah, that's First time I've ever been called a Mormon, bro. You're lost. We're Mormon? Yeah, no, bro. I've never been called a Mormon before. That's interesting. The Mormons hate us. Wrap it up. We're not, hey, walk away. We're not going anywhere. I thought you were leaving, man. I thought you were leaving. I thought you were leaving. Why are you still here? We agree. 
We agree. That's a ju that's a very judgmental thing to say. That we're gonna burn in hell. That's very judgmental. It's very judgmental to say we're gonna burn in hell. We don't have a problem with judgment, young lady. But he does. But we don't have a problem with judgment. You do. Why don't you have a problem with judgment? Because God doesn't. He is God. You are human. You are below him. Exactly. You are below. Do not compare yourself to God. Do not compare yourself to God. Because that's exactly what you're doing. The Bible says to judge righteous judgment. That's what Jesus said. That's basically what you're doing. According to a sinner, I'm not. Because you hate the truth. You are a sinner as well. No, I'm not. The Bible says, be holy as God is holy. You don't read your Bible, man. I do read my Bible. The Bible says, be holy as God is holy. What, what sin do you love that Christ can't help you stop sin? Hey, what do you guys think of the Matt Ryan trade? Like, stop let's just stop talking. Let's sin. stop being mean. Right. Matt Ryan. It doesn't mean you sin. That doesn't mean you sin. No, it doesn't. You're justifying your sin. I know you have an opinion of it. We can be friends by going to be bygones. How do you feel about Ryan Trade? How do you feel about that? We're born sinners. I mean, I'm a Christian. Because people chose to sin. You're not a Christian, man. Are you living holy? I mean, yeah. I'm saying that we can be there so we can pray for him. You know, I think we grew up going to two different churches, so. I didn't say we're trying to be Christian. No, I'm not. Genuinely, I'm not. I actually came here to talk about Matt Ryan, but. We don't care about football, man. No? Nah. Not even a little bit? Nah, not even a little bit. Not even close. I gave that a long time ago, man. It's foolishness. That's different. Men killing themselves for sport. Yeah, that is true. CTE. For a sinner, yeah, not for a saint. Not for a saint who loves Jesus, loves people. It's not for a sin. It's not loving people to, to love that. That's a false analogy. False yeah, I know. I know he did. Why are you so this is a, he said, but we're blessed, bro. We're blessed. Yeah, they false accusers, we're blessed, bro. I'm no, bro. telling you, blessed. you can stop I don't, I don't get down by it. I'm blessed, man. I'm telling you. The, glory, the spirit, you spirit of glory and the peace rests upon you. Amen, bro. That's what Jesus went through. Yeah. The apostles and the prophets went through. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just, just sit back. Just sit back and just let it bask, bro. Just take it in, man. Take it in, bro. Because Jesus did the same thing happened to him, man. You gotta, you gotta learn to take it in, man. Just like, yeah. Thank you, Lord. It says you could possibly sin, but it also teaches that you could possibly not sin, depending on what choice you make by God's grace. Exactly, it's choice, but that's what He's there for. So stop choosing sin. I'm not choosing. We're not choosing it. We are made of flesh. We are human. That's not. That's not going to be a good excuse on the day of judgment. Jesus said, "Depart from me, ye that work." No. Okay. You can't repent of your flesh. That's why you repent. Are you hearing the words? You don't understand out. repentance. Repentance isn't just saying, sorry, God, sorry, and do it the next day. No. Repentance no, is a 180 totally away works. from sin. That is totally not how it works. So are you able? You don't say so, so sorry, and do it the next Let day. Let me ask you a question. You learn from your sin if you are truly repentant. According to the Bible, are you able to stop sinning through Christ Jesus by the power of the Spirit? Are, are you able? Okay. Sure. Then why don't you do it? So you're not able. So you're not able. Listen, listen. So you're not able then. When you're when we're in our new bodies, it's impossible for us to be tempted ever again. Maybe you're mistaking temptation because with sin. Because that body is not made of flesh. Hold on, it is it is flesh. It is not. It's a when we go time. to heaven, we are not flesh, sir. We don't go to heaven. The kingdom of God comes down to earth. Okay. The kingdom of God is coming to earth. Jesus comes down to earth. God comes back. She doesn't even understand basic theology of what the Bible teaches. She doesn't. Your theology is screwed up. According to a wicked sinner. I'm so According to a potty mouth. You haven't pulled the Bible out once, sir. Now what? Why do I have to pull the Bible out? Because I know I know the words. No, you don't. You don't know the word of God. He's worthy in his own merit. No, you can't do that. You remember? Remember? Jesus. Jesus is my rock. Okay. And and because he is in my life. I choose to submit to him instead of sin, instead of temptation. God is provided. Jesus knows our hearts as well. He knows it's wicked, too. And he knows it's wicked. That's right, he knows it's wicked. He knows it's wicked. If you keep walking in your sin, you're proving that you're not his. How am I walking with sin if I'm walking with him? Because if you're You can't do both. You can't do both. Yes, you can. You can. Wow. You can walk with Jesus and walk in sin? No. Is Jesus leading you to sin? So what did Jesus have on the cross for? Deceiving yourself. Like you want to take that, brother? We are in the flesh. 
you said, what did Jesus die on the cross for? What did he die on the cross for? Well, he died to free you from your sin. Okay, but we weren't supposed to. We weren't supposed to pray to him. We weren't supposed to repent to him. When we inevitably fall, because it's going to happen. Okay. Here, here. Well, see, that, that, that's the wrong mindset. The Bible says, yeah, the Bible says if you sin, not when you sin. That's right. Okay, so, so, right. Yeah, so if as a matter of... Is there that I will right, but you're, you're, you're making it sound like it's a, it's a definite thing that's going to happen no matter what. It is a definite Well, then you don't believe the Bible. You, you don't have the mind of Christ. You don't have the mind of Christ. There's not a perfect person on this list. Actually, the Bible called... Noah perfect, right. it called Job perfect, right. it called Are David here? perfect. Are they here? Wait a minute, but were they just men? What? I said they're just men. But, but, but were they just men? Were they just men? Huh? Were they just men? Answer my question, were they just men? I mean, I don't know. They died before, they, they lived before the cross, before Pentecost, and yet we have the cross and Pentecost. We have, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have the, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to help us overcome sin. They did it without that, and you're telling me we can't overcome sin like they did? How do you know that? How do you know that? Wait a minute, how do you know that though? How do you know that? What are you talking about? Wait, Noah perfect, but God? Was Noah perfect? Was Noah perfect? Because you can't fathom a life without sin because you love your sin. How do you know that? Are you God? No, of course not. Then you don't know that. Then you don't know that. Nobody's claiming to be God. I do know what the Bible said, which is God's mind on paper. Because I have God's word on it, which is God's mind on paper. Hello. Oh, you don't want to listen to the Bible. Jesus said in Matthew 5:48, "Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect." That's the command of Jesus. He does not command the impossible. He commands the possible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you walk according to the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. As obedient children, not conforming yourself to your former lust, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, so you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. It's the word of God. Wait, hold on, hold on. That's the word of God, young lady. Do you believe it? Are you a man? Of course I'm not. Well, why can't I call you young lady? Be respectful. I'd like to ma'am. Because... Um, well, number one, I'm probably about twice your age, number one, so I'm not calling you ma'am. Okay? Well, I'm not calling you ma'am, okay? You're, you're, you're probably... I'm probably going to be your father. Okay, so I'm not going to call you ma'am. If you want to tell me your name, I'll call you by your name. I have no problem with that. I'm not calling you ma'am. You've lost your mind. That's right. The Bible teaches that we can live holy. It commands us to live holy. And if you don't live holy, you'll go to hell. That's the Bible all throughout. Now, you can reject that if you want. You can deceive yourself if you want. But if you're living in sin daily, you're not on your way to God's kingdom. You're not on your way to God's kingdom. If you're, if you're living in sin daily, you're not going to inherit God's kingdom. Back to the matter. No one's harassing you. No one's harassing you. That's a false accusation. It's a false accusation. No one's harassing you. It's a false accusation. No one's harassing you. No one's harassing you. Okay. All right, so when I. Well, we're not claiming it's your ours. You claim that was your building, and that's not your building. I want to be peace. Your logic is screwed. And I want to live and do what I'm supposed to do. Well, then move along. We're not, we're not chaining. We're not, we're not forcing you to say that. We're not forcing you to say that. You can walk off. What's not your building? You know why your building's so cheap for you? Because taxpayers pay taxes. I sure do. Lots of taxes. So it's actually just as much my building as it is your building, actually. You're welcome. So that's my building. So stop harassing me in front of my building. I don't own any flamethrowers. What does that mean? Why do you assume that I own it? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. You're bad. Damn, my bad. I forgive you. I forgive you. Don't laugh, bro. Don't laugh. 
Give me a break, man. You have you have parades on every major city in America walking down. Look at my perversion. You have privilege, man. You have privilege. You have privilege. The sign of my privilege. What are you doing right now? You live in America and you have the freedom to go to a college. That privilege. What privilege do I have? Tell me, please, young man, what privilege do I have? Please, man. That is so deceived. But that never happened to you. You're not oppressed. Please tell me about my privilege. Okay, but that's not you. You're not oppressed. Yes, we are. I said you're not oppressed now. That's right. You're not oppressed now. That's right. I'm calling you to repentance. Let them all go to hell. What do we have to repent for? What do we do? Sin. Your sin. You're not oppressed, man. Not deceiving yourself. None of you are oppressed. No, you're not oppressed. No, that's right. That's right. What do you mean by that? In what way? In what way? If we're not equal, then I'm oppressed. What way? I said, are we equal? Okay, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If I apply to go to college here, will I get the same rate as you? Sir, you can get accepted. I don't know. You're not you accepted immediately. Oh, wow. She's deceived, bro. <laughs> I know, bro. They're so deceived, man. Too much CNN on the brain, man. Too much CNN and Fox News. Too much CNN on the brain, man. You've been corrupted in your mind to believe these. What's that? Oppressed in your mind. That's what it is. So I am No, not because of any what? social oppression. That's because of what you feed your mind. How do you see the What you feed your mind? You can't watch CNN on your phone? You, you can't watch CNN on your phone? You can't watch CNN on your phone. What? You ever heard of YouTube? You ever heard of YouTube? You ever heard of YouTube? YouTube's free. YouTube's free. YouTube is free. Oh, that just blew up your whole narrative, didn't it? Oh, like a boom on your narrative right there. Look at him, he's speechless. He's totally speechless. All, all, your little, all your little preconceived notions about me just boom right there. Wait, you say your kids are African American. They are. Are they from Africa? Okay, what do you want to call them? How does society Are identify them? As? They're children of God. That's how I identify them. But I'm speaking to you. Africa. You're not answering my question. They're, Are they they're of African, African descent. descent. That's right. Okay. Thank you. They're Thank of African you. descent. Thank you. I'm not a question. Every, every season, the, the name changes. Whatever you want to call them in society, when you, that's what you call them. Whether it's whether it's I didn't say colored folks. Nobody said that. You just, you just, you just put words in our mouth. Look at the pretty dog. Poison the well. Poison the well. Repent. Turn to Jesus Christ. Follow Jesus Christ in holiness and obedience. Yeah, we're not glorying in tattoos. God doesn't want you marking your body up. God doesn't want you marking your body up. And then I have another one. It's on my dad. That was from my mom. Oh my God, look at that dog. Oh, we got the dog in. Oh my God. Hey, dog, let's go. You're cooler than these fuckers. God's more important than a dog, huh? Right? Our dog's more important than God. I know, bro. Your permit's is six? Yeah. The sign says to five o'clock. Oh. They were saying that earlier. They were saying, if you're not gone by five, you're going to be escorted off campus. Yeah. Oh, 5 p.m. Oh, it is five. Okay. Wait, reserve 10 to six. <laughs> That's what it says, bro. No, bro. That's funny. So where are you supposed to go between five and six? Maybe in the middle ground? <laughs> I don't know, bro. We gotta go in purgatory, huh? <laughs> what time is it? I don't know. Three. Three? Three? Okay. Three. Girls, enjoying yourself? No, I don't watch any sports. 
said, y'all answer everything except for the important questions. Like, when your logic is to come, I, I ask y'all, and God does everything for a reason, y'all all just ignore me like I didn't think that. What do you mean by that? God is all knowing and all powerful, right? And he can see who we are. So he does everything for a reason. So he can come back. If you're going down the middle of saying that God is okay, then I have to go yeah, everything God does. Listen, I'll, I'll answer. I'll answer. Listen, listen, listen. I'm asking the question. Does God do everything? Everything that God, everything that God does. I heard the question. Everything that everything that God does. Everything that God does, He does for a reason. Yes. Thank you. You should get your poster. But God doesn't do everything. Y'all want to see my poster before I before I God doesn't do everything though. God not doesn't, doesn't decree sin. God doesn't predestine sin. That's your fault. Sin is always your fault. No one else's fault. Not God's fault. Not Adam and Eve's fault. Not your parents' fault. Not society's fault. Sin is always your fault. That's why God will punish you for your sin. That's why God will judge you for your sin because it's your fault. I have tens of thousands of times. Well, read this side of the sign. You'll see. Read this right here. There's the answer. That's what I did. Well, this right here. Young man, you have answered your question right here. You said if you've sinned, what, what do you do? Here's the answer. It's what I've done. I did it 25 years ago. I walk with Jesus now. I obey him. I love him. I keep his commandments. I preach his word. That's what I do. But God commands us to do. But well, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So preaching His word always has the potential to change everybody if they'll humble themselves, repent, and believe the gospel. So them not getting changed or them getting changed or not is on them, not on me. My job is to declare the word of God. It's their job to receive it or not. So no matter if I was Jesus in the flesh, that would make any of them get saved. You understand that? So that's on them. If they, if they choose not to believe the gospel, they choose not to repent of their sins, it's on them, not me. My hands are free from their blood. Am I certain of what? Am I certain of that? You claim to be a Christian, right? And you're asking me if I'm certain of heaven and hell? Are you certain of it? Then you're not a Christian. Then you're not a Christian. What's that? You just said you're a Christian a second ago. No, you just said it literally a second ago. I'm a Christian. You're not a Christian. Okay, well, the Bible is God's word. The Bible declares the truth. The Bible talks about heaven and hell all over the place. Okay, so it's God's word. And so I don't have to go there to know it exists. I don't have to experience it myself to know it exists. Just like you don't have to go to Australia to know it exists. Just like you don't have to go to Madagascar. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just like you don't have to go to Madagascar to know it exists. You know it. And I have evidence because I have the word of God. God is not a man that he should lie. What if I just like watch every Sunday? God gives you the truth. The Bible never says that. That's right, never says that. In fact, in the Bible, it tells men to judge. There's a whole book in the Bible called Judges where God calls men to judge men. So judging is not wrong. Now, if I judge unrighteously, not according to the word of God, or I judge hypocritically, then that's wrong. But I'm not doing any of those things. I can't hear when you're talking. Uh, I was hearing it just fine until you started talking. No, sinner, I won't shut up. You shut up. Listen to the word of God. How do you feel about Like, why is it being? What is up with the 
said, well, stealing is against God's word. Okay. God says, thou shalt not steal. How do you feel about your ancestors taking this land? What's that? How do you feel about your ancestors taking this land? Um, first of all, you know nothing about my ancestors, number one. No, you don't. Okay. Sure. But no, you know nothing about my ancestors. Okay. Is that true? Is that, is that true? No, it's not. You're right. Actually, I don't know. Okay, thank you. Hypothetically speaking, you're of American descent. Your ancestors came, immigrated from wherever they came from, and made, you know. Literally, you're a liar right now. Okay. Literally. I am? You're a liar. Okay. Yeah. Literally. You guys falsely accused me and my ancestors. No, I'm just asking a question. You accused my ancestors. I have nothing to do. I have nothing to do with men and other men fighting over land. I hate it. I despise it. I want nothing to do with it. Okay, thank you. That's how you feel about it. That's all you had to say. Yeah, but it's not my ancestors, though. That's all you had to say. They didn't come until the early 1900s. All you had to say. Well, stop falsely accusing my ancestors and me. Sure, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. We don't say judge not that you not be judged. It's Matthew 7, 1. It's Matthew 7, 1, right? Now, if you read to verse 5, you'll see us talking about hypocritical judgment. It says in verse 5, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you'll see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And so, if I had a plank in my eye, that would be applicable to me. But I took the plank of sin out of my eye a long time ago. Now I can see clearly according to God's word and judge properly. But the, but the, but to be fair, John seven. Well, it says in verse five. Could you repeat it? Because I didn't. Okay. So verse five. Yeah. So Jesus said, first take the plank out of your own eye, right? So you take it out, and then you'll see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So taking a speck out of your brother's eyes is, is, is associated in that scripture. But that's not judging. That's no, no, listen, listen, listen. Right no, 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 listen, listen. Matthew 7, 1 through 5 is all about judging. The whole thing's about judging. So taking the speck out of your brother's eye is judging your brother. You're saying you have a speck in your eye. Let me help you get it out. And what Jesus is saying there, if you have a plank in your eye, you can't help him. I mean, literally, if you have a two by four. That's helping. If you, okay, you. Judging is helping. Judging is helping. Not really. Anything. No, it is. I mean, I can't turn this over. I'll let you go ahead. Go for it. Go for it. You're, at least according to the, the scripture that you just now read, that's not directly saying once you got the speck out of your eye, you're allowed to judge. That's saying you got it out your eye. You can see clearly, and now you can guide people in the right direction. But you judging all these Which is what I'm doing. You're, you're judging people. That's what y'all doing on the stage. Y'all coming to a college campus to judge. Like that's really what y'all doing because y'all not really saying y'all not really saying anything about God. Y'all see people wait a minute, wait a minute. You just got here. Really you just got here. How do you know what we've been saying? No, but I've been here several times where y'all been here. Like, this is the only second time I've been here ever. All right, then what y'all other group? Y'all don't. Y'all. It's not like y'all. That isn't my group. That listen, listen. That isn't my group. That isn't my group. I'm not here to promote church. So you'll judge, but you won't promote the thing to get you where you need to be. Well, church, church won't get you to heaven. Number one. Number two. Someone only comes to church if they're truly a follower of Jesus Christ. Number three, I live four and a half. Number three, number three, hold on. I live four and a half hours away from here. No one's coming to my church four and a half hours away. Okay? That's simple. I think you're missing the point here. No, I'm not missing the point at all. Because you want to, and it's kind of frustrating. Because what I'm saying is, what are y'all doing to pass y'all message other than holding these disrespectful signs? There's nothing disrespectful about the truth. The not doing anything. I don't see y'all saying anything like, hey, this is why God is real, or this is why you should follow God, or this is the steps you could take to be like non sinners. I don't see y'all saying anything. All y'all saying is, if you do this, you're going to hell. You, you've literally been here. You've literally been here for like 15 minutes, maybe. Maybe. First of all, what does this say? Read this side. I've been here for Read 15 minutes and I still haven't seen you Read say it. shit about God Read it. other than if you don't go to hell, Jesus died for you, stop sinning, believe they got to obey Jesus. Still nothing in that says how to get to that path. If you really right want there. to encourage people to believe in that God. That is the path right there. You that is honestly, it right there. You're ignorant as dickhead. I'm done to Well, I mean, you're a sinner. That's why you believe that. That is not hell God's yeah, word. I don't believe in God. God wants you to stop being a sinner, though. God, God calls you to repentance. God is not real. No, that's what you think, but that's making go away. Your lack of belief in God is making go away. You understand that, right? That's the thing. I'm not saying you gotta go away. I literally been sitting here talking to you, telling you maybe you should try and encourage the word in the And so, and so you think? Real, shut, can you no, you, you think as a Christian, I take advice from an atheist? I had to preach the word of God. 
Why would I take advice from you how to preach the word of God you're an atheist? People are people. You don't even believe in God. The Bible said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm not walking in your counsel. You need to come down to earth for a second and realize I'm right here on earth. God, you being into God and realize that it's another way to pass your message. Oh, uh, boy, you need to come back to reality and realize I'm not taking advice from you as an atheist. You're like, you're a sinner, so I'm not going to listen to you. That's probably the dumbest That's right. thing I've heard. Well, that's what the Bible says. Sorry. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's you. We're telling you. So if, if I if I begin to walk in your so counsel, I cease to be blessed. I'm not telling you you can't believe in God. I think it's great that you're giving me advice. You're giving me advice on how to preach God's word. You're not even a Christian. There's a bunch of Christians out here, and it don't seem like you're passing the message to anybody. No one seems to give a fuck about. No, you're not. So all I'm saying. Well, we open the Bible. I have I have I have one question. Like for you to tell somebody that they're not a Christian or something because of their sexuality or because of some. So the Bible says. No, it don't. The Bible, the Bible does say that. God died for our sins. Aren't we allowed to sin just to repent like you? Like Absolutely God. not. But how about this? Absolutely it's not. You see how none of y'all want to explain that. None of y'all want to explain that. Do you want to listen to it? Y'all just expect people to know. Y'all expect people to know God the Bible, but y'all not explain you're like you You don't listen. All you're, you're not listening. It's basically ridiculing people for not knowing. No one's ridiculing you. No one's ridiculing you. No one's ridiculing you. Okay, so the scripture says, the scripture says in 1 John chapter 1, starting in verse 5, it says, This is the message we heard from Jesus and declare unto you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So if someone claims to be a Christian, they're claiming to walk with Jesus, but they're actually walking in sin, they're a liar, according to the scripture. You still You still I don't know what, not what? You still not here, bro. You still not here. I'm not here to prove that I'm not walking in sin. All we're saying is that the sign that might be good, it might be good for y'all and everything, it's just that maybe if on a college of opinionated people, Maybe you should just come up here and just be like, hey, can I talk to you? Like, hey, talk to you? No, the Bible says go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. No one's ridiculing anybody. You made that up in your head. You've made it up in your head. You've made it up in your head. Up in your head. The Bible says these things. I'm a Bible teacher. I'm a Bible preacher. Therefore, I will preach the Bible. I will not compromise and preach a false gospel preach that you want me to preach. In the Bible, does it not say that each Christian is going to go to heaven? What's that? In the Bible, isn't there a number of people that's going to be in heaven? Right? Well, Christians will be in heaven. That's no, it. No, because they said even the holiest of Christians might not make it in. Where does the Bible say that? Because my dad is a minister as well. Where does the Bible say that? All the time. It's just that, look. It doesn't say that. Only a designated number in the Bible that's going to go to heaven, right? That's wrong. That's false. Are you sure? That's false. Are you, are you a Jehovah Witness? Are you, are you from like, like a Jehovah Witness background? No, I'm from okay. a Baptist background. Okay, well, I don't know any Baptist that believes that. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. The Bible doesn't teach that. Look, Nowhere does the Word of God say that. No, no. Well, bring it up then. Bring it up. Somewhere where the Bible says only a certain amount of people are going to heaven. I'm holding a sign that glorifies Jesus. You don't have a seminary degree. Who said I didn't have a seminary degree? I asked you if you had one. And I didn't answer your question. You said you did it. No, I didn't answer your yes, question. You did. No, I didn't answer your yes, question. You I haven't answered that question yet today. Yeah, actually, you did it. No, I didn't. You're a liar. No. Yes, you did. No. You're making it worse on yourself by lying about me. You're making it worse on yourself. Worse on yourself by lying. Yeah, by lying about me. Yeah. Okay, you can think that if you want. I don't mind. I don't mind if you call me a liar. I, God knows the truth and so do I. Where's that Bible verse you're telling me about? Okay. I'll take too long. No, I'm not going to shut up. I'm not scared of homosexuals at all. Not one bit. I have no fear of homosexuals at all. Not one. Not even an inch of fear. Are you scared? Huh? Are you scared? No, not even close. Not even a little bit. I fear God, not man. 
Yes, please go away. Don't entertain us. Then why are you here, stupid ass? Why are you here? You don't like what I'm saying, walk away. Obey your friend, walk away, don't entertain us. But yet you still stay here. Yet you still stand here. You know this is our campus. Like y'all literally. No, actually this isn't your campus. You don't own it. No, you don't own it. You don't own it. No, you don't own it. I'm a taxpayer, it's my campus too. I'm a taxpayer, it's my campus too. Yeah, it is. I'm a taxpayer, it's my campus too. Public campus. Public campus. I'm a taxpayer, it's my campus too. Sir, you don't have a job. How do you I'm done talking. Keep lying about me, man. I give you an account for it. It's none of your business. I give you an account. Give you an account for it. None of your business. To be able to pay taxes, you gotta have a job. Gotta have money. Yeah. So what job do you have? None of your business. That sounds that sounds real logical. It sounds really logical. I mean, I get yeah, that I haven't read the Bible. Yeah. I, I don't know what the Bible is. The only reason I brought that up is because there's this white man coming up here talking about slavery, right? So I just want to talk about that. Adam is Adam is Adam is Yeah, I know. You're only a sinner if it becomes an idol. You know? Yeah, I don't think that I don't sit on my couch and, like, graze. Oh, that's not the NFL. That is the best. No! But it's also more of my stuff. Not y'all. Not y'all. No, no. Not the brothers. I know. Delamere Hill has it twice. Now you're going to lie. I don't know. That's very nice of you. I think you might be against the fight. Well, both sides, if this is bad news, the other side is good. So if you're on that list, if you get off that list, by the time you're in Christ, Hey, my homegirl wants to got a girlfriend. That's not a thing. No, no, no. I have to vote for you. No, we don't know. Oh, yeah. Like, Lori, you know what my dear father was on the line? You will buy them? I never said I was. I didn't know I wanted to buy them. I didn't know I wanted to buy them. I didn't know that. 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 I would say this. If they're prideful, Jesus is just as proud. If they're great, if they're humble, that's what Jesus said. That's the goal, but nobody said it. Just like we follow Jesus and we do exactly what he did. So if someone's coming at us all religious and very prideful, we're gonna they need they need they don't need humility or we don't give them a, a, a we give them a review, you know, just like Jesus. So we don't give them no, he said, said only Jesus was perfect. Don't lie to her. Oh no, so I'm not. Thing I'm not you know, so just saying that they're aggressive, it, it may look aggressive to y'all, but that's just, that's just that's how you think. I know what you're saying. If temptation was a sin, then I appreciate you being calm. Even I am not as calm as I can always be when they're here. But I'll, I'll, I'll say this right now. If you weren't calm, I would have to resist you. 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 Jesus defined marriage and made God. Yeah, man, you. Oh, God. God would know the college of Jesus. Look around your time. Then now you're good. Because if you think one of you're still late, so you're no good. Bring those good on our table. Yeah, we don't want to go. Turn the sign so we can see the word of God. The word of the all loving God. Turn it around. No, don't do it. I'm not saying like Jesus condoned like the crusades or something. I mean, let us
They're following the wrong God. If they don't repent and trust in Jesus, yeah. It's like every other sin. What denomination are you? No denomination. Just Bible-believing, Bible-obeying, born-again Christian. That's it. Well, I, I can't judge them with a broad brush. I can't judge them with a broad brush, I said. It's, I'm giving you the answer. I'm giving you the answer. I can't judge them like that universally. It's individual by individual. Right? Does everyone that follows the Bible automatically like a royal Christian? Of course. Of course. Okay. I'm talking about what they disagree. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what it is. I mean, it's all kinds of little things that don't really make a difference. Like what? Give me an example. Oh, that's definitely false. People go to hell for that. Well, they don't belong in a church. They don't belong in church. They're a sinner. They're a sinner. The church is the body of Christ. The body of Christ has no sinners in it. I thought the purpose of church was to bring sinners there to the church. No, that's not true. The purpose of church is to equip and disciple believers. The purpose of preaching the gospel is to bring sinners in. Bring them to repentance. And when they repent of their sins and believe the gospel, then they come into the church. I'm not trying to be So where did they go? If they want to learn about Well, they have to repent and believe the gospel. That's the first that's the first thing they do. I'm talking about how do you get people in if the first thing that they have to do is believe? You go preach the gospel to them. The Bible says go into all the world and preach the gospel to every preacher. It's preaching, yeah, of course it is. So you don't, you don't invite sinners to church. You invite sinners to Jesus out of the church building, and then when they get saved, you bring them into the church building in the meeting place. Shut up, Adam. I just, I don't see how what you're doing is like preaching that. Okay. My base, I think you're just looking for like a reaction. You're wrong. That's not in true. All due respect, like I, in all due respect, I genuinely, like, not trying to be too rude over here, but I don't know why you guys keep on coming back when, like, none of us are being recruited. Like, to your I'm not here to recruit. Like, I'm not here to recruit. And also, who wrote the Bible? You got any more questions? Bro? God did. You're, like, the most reasonable one out here. Through holy men. I don't really have a question. I just want to be honest. I've been born and I'm, I've been like raised in the church. So yeah. it's like, because I don't know my, my pastor Jackson, he's like, probably y like y'all guys, to be honest. He's a pastor. And he's like, he's all the savior or something. I forgot how it goes again. But I, I used to always be in the church when I was a kid. But yeah. when I got older, I kind of like, I'm like, like, out here with that racist you know? nonsense. Is he white? Is Jesus white? Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Just don't just ignore them. Just ignore them. They're just stirring up trouble. Don't go ahead, bro. I'm gonna say What? 
That's what I told him. Like, he was like, he's misinterpreting what I said. What did you say? You said you got a perfect. No, I didn't say you got a perfect. He said he was perfect. Hey, bro, just ignore it. Tell him what you say. Don't be a liar. Like your son says not to be. Keep going, yeah, man. Don't mess with me, dude. Shut up. I was, I was, I was raised in a church. They're the greatest people you know, I know. I know. Like, like, well, I'm still like, right here, like, somehow. And they go to church. And they go to church. And they ask for forgiveness. And they ask for forgiveness. But they love their sin. Addiction Jesus rebuked people like that. I mean, the apostles rebuked people like that. I know. They love their sin. I'm saying, if they do rebuke people like that, they love their sin. Why is they being like that? Because they chose to live a sinful lifestyle for so long, it's become an idol to them. It's become like a second nature. Not because they were born with it. But because they've habitually and willingly done it so many times, it's become like second, like somebody shooting 3,000 baskets from the three-point line every day. I used, I used to play ball, so I mean, I would shoot up shots every day, and it became like second nature. Like I could just close my eyes and shoot a three-point. We're not even think about it anymore. Yeah, you wouldn't even think about it. Wouldn't even think about it. It's right. like muscle memory. But that's how it is with sinners who have practiced sin for so long, they need a new nature, so to speak. And Peter talks about the divine nature, that we can become partakers of the divine nature, and we can be made new. I have a lot of ways, but I'm just saying, is there any way that I can try to, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I repent, but my sins will go away, like, no, how would I you can't just repent and your sins will go away. It's in faith in Jesus, turning to Christ away from your sin, believing on his blood that cleanses you of all your sin, and never going back to that sin again. That's your mindset. I'm never going back to that sin again, Lord, and I receive your spirit. You it's possible in Christ. What's impossible with man is possible with God. The problem that I have is just that there are just certain things that just like I just don't fundamentally agree with because that's in the Bible. Like it, like when, like I grew up like Christian, like my whole life, and then like later, later down the years, like high school, I was like. What do I truly like to believe? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, that's how they're gonna be here. That's how I am. That's what I'm at. So, yeah. Greatest Christian I've ever met. So it's like, so I'm, I'm not gonna come at you from the perspective of like, I hate you, because like, I don't yeah. believe I'm not that. Right. No, we have to understand though that we have to have a source of truth outside of ourselves. Right. And, that's, and that source itself must be absolute. And so, what is your source of truth for disagreeing with what the Bible says? No, I'm talking about, it's not, um, Adam, I don't have a, be here next. The, prob like, the problem that I ran into is, what did I believe in because the Bible told me so and what do I believe in because I truly think that way because it's like with like homosexuality at first I was like against that yeah, but, it was like, but it was like when I thought about it I was like why do I think it's so okay well that's that's it's it's understanding to think it through I can justify it with it being like a sin in the Bible and with my own belief in like what murder is. But it was like, what well, certain down the things were like homosexuality, just like oh, uh, like other things were there. It's just like the Bible said it was a sin. But when I evaluated like myself, I was just like, I fundamentally don't agree with this view. So where'd you get your truth from then? Like, that's what I'm saying. So, so it's, truth is has to come from outside of you. You and I, we began at some point in time, right? We haven't always existed. We don't have all knowledge. We're not everywhere at one time. So, who created the Bible? Well, God did. It's God's word to you. No, actually, what the Bible says about itself, it was inspired by God, written by men. So. No, but. Okay. Okay. So, so for example, like. If you're not going to believe the Bible, right? What other option do you have? You follow your own. You got to believe But what if what if you're wrong? Where are you getting your truth from? The, the, point, we, the point is in this life, sometimes we never really get our truth. So well, I don't mean I don't mean your truth. I mean the truth. I'm talking. I don't have. I'm not like a religious person. I'm like. I don't have like a definition of like what is like a whole like basically I believe that So you don't believe in absolutes at all? No not like when we're turning to like morality. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Basically I believe that we make what are out of our lives what we can Basically, I believe that life has like no inherent meaning, but we as ourselves, we make that meaning based on how we live our lives. Okay, but going back to morality for a second, how do you know what is right and wrong? But I live my life based upon whatever I do, as long as it 
doesn't affect other people, it should be okay. Okay. If I go into a bunch of uh, depositions like that. Based on okay, so if it doesn't affect people, but you understand that your sin always affects people. If you lie to somebody, you're affecting them. What does being like a homosexual affect? Well, if you go to like the CDC website, they'll tell you the average homosexual dies at the age of 42 years old. The average heterosexual, that is 75 years old. So automatically they're cutting 33 years off their own life. How many people could they affect for the good during those 33 years that they can't? People don't choose that. No, they choose it. Yeah, they choose it. They choose it for sure. No doubt about it. You know how you have like an attraction to like women. I'm not talking about tracks, I'm talking about acting out on it. I'm saying. I mean, traction can be deformed, right? I mean, it's guys who who sit and watch pornography all day, and they'll like they'll like child pedophilia. The Did they choose that? I'm saying the Bible is basically just like police telling you you can't do this. You need to be able to justify why you shouldn't be able to do this. Than just saying the Bible says it's wrong. No, but that doesn't that doesn't really answer my question though. So I'm I'm asking you how you know what is something's wrong, and you said because I, I decide for myself. Yes. Right, but how do you know what you're saying is right or wrong? That's what that's what life is. I could literally live my whole life and I'm perfectly fine to find out at the end of it all that I was wrong. I don't and think I'm you're perfectly, perfectly fine with that. Do you understand the consequences? That's, a, that, that's the thing. That's the thing. Like, you, you're basically just saying I should follow the law. No, I, that, I disagree. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say it. That's not okay. That didn't come out of my mouth. No. I'm simply saying you're sad. You, I'm simply responding to what you said. You said I'm fine with being wrong in the end. I said no, you're not. I said, do you understand the consequences for being wrong? If I'm right, you're going to hell forever. If you're right, I'm just dusting the ground, dude. Worm food. That's all I am. So if the Bible said you should murder everybody, no, the, the Bible doesn't say that and wouldn't say that because it's from God. It's sourced in God. The Bible says you should do it just out of you'll go to hell if you don't do it. When did I say that? You literally said no. I, upon the consequences. No, that's not what I said. I said that I was addressing once again what you said. You said I'm fine with the consequences. I'm simply telling you, you won't be fine with it. I never once said, I never once said, obey the Bible because it says it. Obey the Bible or else you're gonna go to hell, and that's the reason. The primary reason you should obey the Bible so you don't go to hell. I never said that. You made that up in your mind. No, I, I, I'm simply saying that what you're what you're saying, I'm okay with it. You won't be okay with it. That's all I'm telling you. I'm, say, I'm saying, of course, I don't want I don't want to like burn in hell forever. But it's like this is the life. This, I just fundamentally disagree. Like if Islam was correct, I wouldn't automatically join Islam. Because, if you knew it was correct, you wouldn't join it. No, because if there was certain things I disagree with, it, but you, you rather live a lie than live the truth. I would rather live a life where I view my own beliefs and I, I don't just become a viewpoint for somebody else's beliefs. No one's asking you to become a viewpoint for someone else's beliefs. I'm simply telling you, you you preface this whole thing you just said is if I knew Islam was true. I'm simply saying your life should be a search for the truth. And wherever the truth is, you ought to follow it and obey it and believe it. I'm saying I view God as like somebody who set rules and basically I'm a person as a citizen I disagree with a lot of the rules that he has. Does that matter though? If, if God is right and God is true and he makes the rules you say well I don't agree with that God I will do whatever I want does that really help you? I'm saying is that really going to help you? I don't need it to help me. Well I mean, listen man you might live to be like 100 years old tops right? Does that sound about right? Maximum you might live to be 100 years old right? So let's, let's, let's give you 120 okay? 120 years doing whatever you want to do. You get pleasure in it. You're happy with your life. But then you go to hell for eternity. Tell me it was worth it. I'm saying. I'm just asking. Tell me it was worth it. I'm saying that's what. Is it worth it? You're literally just saying I shouldn't do this crime because of the jail. Well, that's one of the reasons why, yeah. 
my whole thing is, if I had to steal, I don't know so that my family could, 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 could. You don't. You don't, though. You don't, though. I'm saying you can work. My lifestyle is incompatible with. with you, you can work, though. You don't have to steal to, to provide for your family. You can work. And if you're if, and if and if you're a follower of Jesus, he can provide for you miraculously. People don't just steal because they don't work. Say again? Was it perfect? Why is it a lie? Why is it a lie? But listen, we're not talking about back. We're talking about right now. Okay. Okay, but listen, but listen, listen. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. There was things in the past that were done very wrong. No doubt about it. And that, and that, what we're talking about right now, if you work hard, you can, you can, you can provide for yourself. Hold on. If you work hard, you can provide for yourself. That's actually true now. I didn't say it was always true. I would say men have been wicked. No doubt about it, man. They've been wicked to other men, but that's not you. That's not now. So that's, that is true now, right? Okay. You are not the judge of Everybody that asks me for money, I don't Well, listen, listen I, I gave an answer a second ago. If, if, if you follow Jesus, he'll provide free miraculously if he has to. What guy are you talking about? What's his name? I don't know who that is. There's, there's true. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, you, if you're sinning, you don't love God, though. If you're sinning, you don't love God. That's, that's just wrong. That's true. If you, if you lie, it does. Yeah. If you no, lie. Jesus said in John 14, 15, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. No, nobody's perfect. But wait, hold on a second. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. But listen, you're not, are you listening to the word of God? It's very, it's very simple. Just listen to it. Listen again. Just one more time. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So if you're not keeping his commandments, you don't love him. It's that simple. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, you, you sound like Thomas almost, because Thomas said he wanted disciples. He, was, he wasn't around when Jesus first rose from the dead. He said, I won't believe this. I see it myself. Once I put my hands in his side, put my hands in his scars, I will, I will not believe it. And then Jesus appeared to him, and he said, my Lord and my God. And he said, and then Jesus said, blessed are you, see, you believe because you, hold on. He said, he said to Thomas, you believe because you see, but blessed are those who do not see and yet believe. You don't have to see something to believe in it. You've never seen your brain, but you think. You've never seen your stomach, but you eat. You ever seen your lung, but you breathe? So to, to, to say I have to to say that I have to see God to believe in Him is nonsense. So I'm catching you in your fault. You can prove God exists. Of course you can. You can't see your brain though. So that's what I'm saying. So you, you, if, to be consistent, listen. To be consistent. If, if you're gonna say if I, if God was right here before me, I believe in Him and follow Him. Well then, if you're gonna be consistent, you shouldn't believe your brain exists. It's not a matter of fighting, though. It's a matter of the truth. truth. What makes what you're doing different from what another religion? Like if, a, if somebody, if another group showed up here tomorrow with their own size preaching their own religion, what could you say that shows them the real truth? So are you an atheist? I believe that. I believe that there is a higher being. 
So you're a theist. You're a deist. Yeah, that, there is a higher being, but I'm not sure like anything about that higher being or if they're influential in like our daily lives. So I just believe that there is, but I don't know anything. That's about deism. It. That's deism by definition. So you believe there's an impersonal God who created everything, put it in motion, and is impersonal and distant from his creation. Yeah, but when I say the line, it's more, for me it's more like a hope because I like if you ask me to prove this, I really can't. But for me it's just like you can faith, faith. You can't. You can't prove God exists. No. Why not? No, I mean, because you're How would I go about doing that? Well, tell me how you go about proving your brain exists. There's literally scientific evidence. That your brain exists? Yes. Where is it? It's in my head. It's in your head? Yes. Well, if, have you seen it in your head? You can literally get a brain scan. To that. Well, that's a picture of a brain, supposedly. It's a picture of something that exists inside my That's what they tell you. Where is the evidence? So, so you believe what people tell you? If they have evidence to support it, yes. No, what well, they, they don't have evidence. They're, you have to believe what they're saying. They think of, they supposedly take a picture of your brain, right? And then they show it to you. You say, "This is your brain." And you say, "Okay, I believe you." How do you know they're telling you the truth? Because no, how do you know they're telling you the truth? How do you know that they're lying? That's what I'm pointing. But my point is, you're saying you need proof like hack it be any other way. I should be telling you, you don't have proof your brain exists. If you're gonna use it like that, but you still think, don't you? You though. Don't you still read? My brain is is How do you know that? Literally. How do you know that? What does that mean? Do you have bones? I, I might, I might not, according to you. I haven't seen them. I'm saying I don't need to see my bones. Well, then I don't need to see the God. It's proving he exists either then. See how that works? You say, I don't need to see my brain to prove it exists. I said, well, I don't need to see God to prove he exists. I'm saying. Because it's already been established. No, it hasn't been established. That bones? That your brain exists? Yes. Where has it been established? Literally, I've had brain scans before, back when I had C According to the people who took, supposedly took the brain scan. Yes, the medical professional. How do you know they're not lying to you? How do you know they're not lying to you? What do you mean? How do you know they're not lying to you? The medical professional who scanned my brain. Supposedly, 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 you don't know that. You weren't, you didn't see the brain itself. That's because if I, if they took out my brain to show me, I wouldn't be alive to see it. My point exactly. So you can never prove your brain exists according to you. I, if you're born, Wait a minute now. So if I believe the Bible, which was inspired by God, written by holy men, you would say, well, how do you know they aren't lying to you? That's what you would say to me. And I'm saying the same thing to you. How do you know those technicians who supposedly took pictures of your brain are not lying to you? I wouldn't say how are they not lying to you. How do you know? My, my whole belief system is that basically these are my two uh, main points that I learned. Basically, I could not prove that my God existed and even if I could Apologies. The Zachary God that Knight I was raised and God believed in, I disagreed with his view. I'll tell you this. There's more proof that God exists emphatically and absolutely than your brain exists. I'm saying. Just telling you. I'm saying even if you. Just saying. I'm saying even if you, even if you prove without a doubt that he exists, there are just certain viewpoints that I just can't stand behind. Because you're an unbeliever. Uh, that's not talking about yeah, you're, you're, I'm trying to get to, to, but my, my point is and, and bring you down this whole path is that you are so inconsistent that you will say I can't prove God exists I don't know he exists but I know my brain exists there's emphatically a million times more evidence that God exists than the brain exists I'm okay with it they're, they're not okay with it I'm just going to be telling you that if you're, you're being very inconsistent because you, you believe your brain exists, you believe your stomach exists, you believe your lungs exist, you haven't seen any of them, you have no proof they exist. You can literally go to a, to a, a hospital and supposedly get a picture taken. And supposedly get a picture taken. It's not a it's a scan. Supposedly. You don't know that. So what? How do you prove it then? That's my point from your point of view. You can't even prove it. So you're saying everybody's just lying to us. It's possible, isn't it? It's like you're, it's like you're claiming the writers of the Bible could be lying to us. I didn't. I never claimed that. Well, you're, that's what you're claiming essentially, right? No. Do you believe they're not lying to us? 
Do you believe they're not lying to us? No, my, my whole point is the reason I have troubles with the Bible is because it's written from a viewpoint of people from across the country. Like, oh, wait a minute, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Forget about all that. Is it true? I mean, I mean, I mean, here. Is it true? The Bible. Is what true? Everything in the Bible, is it true? I know what's happening. That's not a yes or no question. It sure is. It sure is. You just don't want to answer it. What? That's like asking if a politician is true. It's like on certain things, I can say that. I'm asking if everything in the Bible is true. No, not everything. See, see, now, now you are saying, you are saying now that the writers lied. No. Yeah, you are. Is everything in the Quran true? None of it's true. None of it. Bro, there's so many Arab Christians. What about the events that line up? So, when you have events that happen in the Quran, because a whole bunch of events. Give me an example. The, the, the world flooding. There are a whole bunch of religious texts that have. The one involved. Okay, okay. So, what, when you said that everything in the Quran is, is, is true or not, I was talking about the teachings of it. The teaching? Yeah. I would, I would, I would give. Not, not to avoid the question, but I will say to you the same with the Bible. I will say there are aspects that I agree with and there are aspects that I disagree But I'm saying, just by saying any of it is false, you're now claiming that the writers are liars. No. And what is your basis for that? I, I'm not saying that they lie. I'm saying what are they, that... Then they're deceived? Huh? They're deceived? What? They're, they are deceived then? Deceived? Are they deceived, the writers? They could have been. Are they ignorant? No, no. Are they ignorant? They could have been. They could have been. Okay. I don't want to avoid the Quran. I'm saying. No, I have no return policy, man. I'm saying. It's got the Quran, I'll throw it away. Uh, what is it? I'm saying, what do you mean by it? I'm saying, I'll be. I'm never saying that they lie. I'm saying that there could be an information that they got wrong simply from. Not even that. They. He, their accounts could literally be 100% correct, but I'm saying that. You can the convince them, man. No matter, no matter what you say, the verdict is out. You can convince them. That's right, because I, I stand I'm, fast I mean, with the scriptures. They're, they're inconvincible. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's a compliment. That's right. Thank you. I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That the, the Bible says about itself that its basis of truth is a fact that is, it's, it's inspired by God. Okay, so. How do you know it's a fact? I, listen, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. I mean, I'm not. The but listen, but listen, listen, I'm not, listen, just let, let me go down this train of thought so you can understand what I'm saying, okay? No, no, you can't say that you're, the you're, Bible you're, is you're going off on a rabbit trail. And just simply telling you, okay, you I'm, are, you are. I'm just simply telling you what the Bible says about itself, okay? I'm not, I'm not declaring you need to believe what it says. I'm simply telling you what it says about itself and that's inspired by God, okay? So if that's not true, then it's not inspired by God and none of it's believable, okay? If that is true and you're saying it's not true, that makes God a liar. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm perfectly okay knowing that I can have my own sense of belief, but I don't think you are. No, I'm not saying that as an insult. I'm saying, well, no, no, let's, 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 about disagreeing with Almighty God. There's nothing commendable without with this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's nothing. Listen, 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 listen. There's, not, listen. there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing, there's nothing commendable about disagreeing disagreeing with the God of the Bible. Okay, about being a rebel. I'm not like a prophet or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying. Well, I know you're not a prophet. I didn't say you were I'm, saying that. I'm not saying like, oh, I'm some big stuff because I disagree with God. No, it's like. No, I'm, I'm simply I'm just telling you. Like this dude right here, if we have a disagreement on something, it's just like, okay, and that's how I view the Bible. It's like, but if I have a disagreement with something. The Bible's God's word, though. That's the, that's the difference. The Bible's God's word. God's word. Yeah, that's well, it's what it claims about itself. So you say if the Quran claimed that it's no, true, I, you would believe it. You didn't it. let me finish. You didn't let me finish. I wasn't done. It's what it claims about itself, and it proves to be true. What does it prove to be true? Everything. The prophecies in it, the commandments in it, where it talks about how someone's life has changed. I've experienced that for myself. So I know it's, excuse me? That's your personal experience. That aligns up with what the scripture says. What do you say to people of other religions that have had their own personal experience? Like that their, their experience is not based upon the truth. So, would you truly believe that I'm going to hell? Because I don't Wait a minute, what, what's your religion? I mean, let's say Islam. You're a Muslim. So you believe I'm going to your hell? 
Come on, be honest. Don't don't don't, don't lie though. Don't engage yeah. in Takia now. That, that's let's be true. Okay, so so let, let's talk about how exclusivity is. So in, in the law of non-contradiction of logic, if two different groups of people say different things about the same situation, they can't both be right. It's either one of them is right or they're both wrong. Isn't that right? So if someone says two plus two goes four, someone says five, they can't both be right. You say the way to eternal life, hold on, hold on. You, they can both be wrong, you're right. Are you admitting you're wrong? I could be. Okay, well, I mean, that, I, that's, 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 a, that's a real low level of trust in Allah, okay? Is Allah's word, hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm talking to him for a second. Is Allah's word true? I'm not talking, I'm talking to him. I think it is, I believe it's true. Do you know it's true? No, I don't have, my, I don't have any evidence that it's true. That's what do you mean by evidence? I mean, I mean, I mean, I wasn't ordained by any divine, divine master. I'm not asking by ordination, I'm just asking if you know it's true. I uh, know, I actually don't know. I mean, God has given you a brain, right? Yeah. So he's given you logic, you know how to understand things. You don't have to have someone with a piece of paper to tell you it's true or not. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that. To get where I got, I basically, I'm not even saying this. But to get where I got, basically what I did was I there were beliefs that I had to justify based upon what the Bible said, and there were beliefs that I had to justify. So like I was saying, okay, in the Quran, how does it tell someone to get eternal life? How do you get eternal life in the Quran? How do you get forgiveness of sins? Paradise, going into paradise. Yeah, we pray, we go to paradise. But how? How do you get there? I mean, by coming, not committing sins, by following our prophet. But haven't you already committed sins? What? Haven't you already committed sins? Uh, not, not the deadly ones. What's the deadly ones? The ones that, ones that are... Is it still a Okay. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, Yeah, I, did, I didn't commit any of these. Okay, but I, that's, this is not all the sin. It's not an exhaustive list. You are a Muslim, so you committed that sin. That's on yeah, there. According to you, because, but in my... You're an idolater. There would be Christians. Exactly. So, so you have committed sins. Right. Yeah. So have you ever lied before? I did. You've never lied in your life. Be honest now. You've lied before. Tell the truth. I mean, if I, if I, if I did lie... I used to be a liar. I mean, it's, it's not a very deadly lie, which would harm anyone. It's interesting how you want to classify and categorize sins to justify yourself before Allah. Interesting that you want to do that. Not the way it works. I lied to my teachers about cheating in exam. Okay, so there you go. So you've lied before. So I've done that too. I, I've I've lied I've lied thousands of times in my life. No, we are different because there's a problem here. There's a problem because because in, 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 in Islam you have scales around your neck, right? The scales around your neck in Islam. You're trying to make your righteousness outweigh your sins, and then maybe Allah will be good to you. Maybe He'll have mercy on you. But see, here's the problem. Use that in the court of law here on earth. Okay. You commit crimes in the law of the land, right? You stand before a judge and say, Judge, I know I've committed these three crimes, but I've done lots of good things too, Judge. Let me go free. Now, a good judge will give you the punishment you deserve. Okay? So, so Allah's not going to let you go free just because you did some good things too. Your good things don't forgive you of your bad things. That's the way it works. And so, in, in, in the, the truth of the scriptures, the Bible, the way someone gets forgiveness of sins, like the way they get to the point where God says, I will not hold that against you any longer, is through repentance of them first, then belief in the gospel. You know the gospel? The Angel? Jesus died on the cross for you. Okay? I'm one of the people with the book. I'm trying to tell you the Angel right now. Okay? The Angel, you know, believe me, your book tells you to, to, to listen to me. Go to the people of the book and listen to them. I'm trying to give you the book now. Okay? The Angel, and Jesus was born of a virgin. You believe that? He was born, he born of a virgin. The sinless and perfect life, he performed miracles, signs, and wonders, attesting to who he was. He died on the cross, he rose from the grave, defeating death, and he commands all men everywhere to repent and believe in him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Is this the first time a Muslim is holding this sign? Probably. Why is he holding the sign? Because it's hot. Yeah, it's very hot. I was giving oh. shade. Okay. I mean, he would believe that too, but God would be all of it. You don't want the Bible. I don't think it's good to have, let him hold the sign, though. <laughs> that's, a, that's a sanctified sign. That's right. So, 
That's how you get saved. Now, in Islam, you have no hope. Even Muhammad himself said, I do not know what Allah will do with me. That's what he said. So if, if Muhammad, supposedly the greatest prophet ever, did not know what Allah will do with him, how can you ever know? Do you have no security? you have no assurance of salvation? We, I mean, none of us do. I mean, no, I do. Do you really do, do you know that? I mean, yeah. Yes. Do you believe that it's true? No, no, I know it. I know it. How do you know the living spirit? The Spirit of God testifies within me that I'm a child of God. So you don't have that. You don't have the Spirit of God. You don't want to claim that. No, no, you're right. I want to claim it, but I have it. Okay? And you can have it too. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. The same Spirit of God that I have the same assurance I have that I have salvation is the same assurance you can have if you repent of your sins and put childlike, humble, trusting faith in the Jesus who died for you on the cross. It wasn't Judas on the cross, and Allah was deceiving people. It was literally Jesus dying on the cross for you. And the miracle is that he rose again the third day. And then the secondary miracle is he rose to, to heaven. And he sits at the right hand of the Father, and he prays for his saints, Christians. And he's going to come back again someday. You believe that too. You believe he's coming back. I'm just going to be telling you, he's going to come back in the judge and righteousness. And you're not, you're not ready for him right now to come back, because you're not right with him. Okay, so when he'll come back, I'll, I'll convert. I'll, I'll it might be too late for you then. It, no, it, it, see, that's not the way it works, man. The, the Bible says today's the day of salvation, you know? You're not guaranteed tomorrow. You could die today. You're, you're, you're thinking you're going to be here when Jesus returns, but you might not be here tomorrow. But the thing is, I mean, people have died before before Jesus was born, right? Yeah. So, so maybe... Oh, so what happened to them? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay, well, they, they get saved the same way we do, except they're before the cross, okay? They repent of their sins and trust in the one true and living God of the Bible, who Jesus is a manifestation of. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Okay, so in the beginning was the Word, that's Jesus. He was with God. He was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him, nothing was made that was made. Not a man. He's God in flesh. I think I can negotiate with God. I mean, I, I think I should be able to. There's no negotiation. Depend, depending, on the, depending on the messages he gave me, I should be able to negotiate. No, there's no negotiations. No negotiations. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man, including you, comes to the Father, but by me, Jesus said. But Jesus said. So there's no negotiations. So the problem is, you don't want to trust him. No, I you, trust you, him. No, 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 not, not, the, not the false Isa prophet of Islam, the Jesus of the Bible, God in flesh, the Son of God, God the Son. He commands you to follow him, no matter the cost to yourself. To not fear man, but to fear God and keep his commandments. This is man's all. That's what God commands you to do. Now you have a choice to make. You have a cross right now. See, we, we're on the narrow road, and we're calling to you who's on the broad road, come off the broad road, come to the narrow road through Jesus, and have eternal life. We're calling to you today. It's your choice to make. But you understand, my hands are free from your books. I told you the truth. It's your choice to make, young man. I want you to be saved. I want you to have eternal life. I want you to know God like I know God. But the Christian heaven is going to the Muslim heaven. In Muslim heaven, you get <laughs> that's 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 really sexy perverted, that's, by the way. Like so that's below. really sexy still, perverted. Still, it's still more interesting. So what you really understand is that all the women who are on this camp, you just really downgrade them to a piece of meat that you can have sex with them in, in heaven. And let me ask you this question: After you have sex with those seventy virgins once, and not virgins anymore, so what what goes to do then? But they'll, they were virgins. What goes to do then? But still, I mean, you can always have them. <laughs> but that's okay. Eventually you're going to get bored. So, so let, me, let me tell you something. Have you have more stuff in, in Muslim paradise than a Christian paradise? A actually, actually, that's not true because you're thinking in a very carnally way. That's why you're saying that. Now, if you think spiritually minded, there's so much more in God's kingdom. You're, see, in God's kingdom, there's no more pain. There's no more suffering. There's no more sorrow, no more crying, no more the same, tears. Same time say for there's no more death. The same can be said for Muslim. I mean, it's oh, really? What about, the Muslim, what about the Muslim woman? What about them? Who are just pieces of meat for you to, to gratify your sexual desires from? What happens then? Are they enjoying it? Oh, so women don't matter in, in Allah's uh -oh. kingdom, huh? <laughs> just, just you. So seventy women for every man, says, right? So, be, so you're thinking very carnally minded. And, and what about the what about the what about 
Not just, just, not just Mohammed's Day, bro. Right well, now right in Muslim now, countries, in world, women yeah. are just pieces of property. Right. Am I right? They no, spank them, they whip them, they don't do what's right, and they don't cover their faces. We have yes, testimonies of Come on, man, we know. Suffered in Muslim Come on, don't, don't, don't engage in Takiya now. I've never been to a Muslim country, man. Sharia. I don't have to go there to know it, to what's going on there. Women are oppressed, bro. Do I, wait, that's that's Takiya. When, when Muslim, on, when Muslim clerics talk about these okay. things, are you telling me they're lying? I mean, I mean, and you're telling me the truth? And most people don't follow this, follow this No, I'm asking you a question. It's a simple Just question. Like most people don't follow you. No, I'm, I'm, I don't see him okay, but well, you. that's that's a really rabbit trail. Nice try. There's a rabbit trail. It's a straw man. Just like you don't define Christianity, they don't define it. That wasn't my question. I'll ask it again. Listen very carefully. <laughs> you're telling me that Muslim clerics in other countries are lying about this negative picture of their religion, about how women are treated, but you, living in America, is telling the truth about it. That's what you want me to believe? No, I want you to go, go to Muslim countries and see I don't have to go there. They're telling me about themselves. Why would they lie about it? Why would they lie in this negative way about themselves? I mean, just... If they lied in any way, they lied the opposite way, right? I mean... Well, when they're free here, they have all the freedoms they have in Western countries. If I went to the Kaaba and I, and I started sharing the gospel, what would happen to me? No, 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 no. He'd be killed on, on the spot. Come on, man. And covered up and what buried in the sand and desert, never, never seen I again. Preaching the gospel at the Kaaba in Mecca. What happens? You know what happened. Go ahead and tell the truth. See, the reason why you're hesitating because you know it makes your religion look bad. That's why. You're hesitating because you know it makes your religion look bad. That's why you lied a second ago, too. You know it makes your religion look bad. That's why you're engaging with the Kia right now because you know you can do that when it saves your religion from looking bad. A Muslim who loves their neighbor as himself and doesn't entertain jihad is borrowing from Christianity. Yep. That's not what Muhammad believes. That's the message of Jesus. That's the message of Christ. Not the example of Muhammad. No. Muhammad's example was killing. A after Muhammad. To convert. No, that's not true. Yes, he killed to convert. Mecca, yes. He sure all, did. All the scriptures he wrote after Mecca counteract what's the doctrine called? That, that those are the true scriptures. Forget about the peaceful scriptures. There's a doctrine. I forget the name The name of the doctrine. Whether, whether that's true. But, but the fact is, Muhammad is the greatest prophet, right? Yeah. And what was his example? You kill to conquer and convert to Islam lest you die. Or you can pay the, or you can pay the tax. That's, that's the only options you have. You either pay the tax, and if you, if you were a Christian living in a Muslim country back then, and even now, and you try, to be actually, you try to actually be a Christian and convert people to Christianity, which is being a Christian, trying to convert people to Christianity, you can put to death. Dubai, I mean, UAE is an exception, but they're not under Sharia law. They're more I mean, liberal. I mean, not a single they're country, country levies taxes non-Muslims, not a single one. I, I, have, I, never, I have been to, I mean, I've been to a lot of them, I've never seen it in my entire life. Well, you're a Muslim man. How would you know about it? You're not a, you're a Christian. How would you even know about it? We get story because after story. Well, we have, we have, we know people who are Christians yeah. who are being taxed over there, who are being persecuted over there. Yes, of course. Story, huh? Can you show me one? I, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. It'll be a whole documentary you can go watch for yourself, okay? Right. It's called Sheep Among Wolves. Yeah. Look it up for yourself. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on Vimeo. Sheep Among Wolves. It's about an organization called FAI and GCM who are supporting Christians in Iran who are being persecuted and put to death for their religion. Now, you can tell them they're lying if you want to, but it's the facts. Once again, sheeps, sheep among wolves. Okay, it's very simple to remember. And if you really want the truth, go search it out for yourself. If you just want to believe your lies, you can ignore what I just said and keep believing what you want to believe. That's your choice. And I, I really I really would like for you to take those two pamphlets he gave you earlier. You gave it to somebody else. I'd like for you to take them again. Because if you really want the truth, young man, you'll seek it out. If you want to be blind in your delusions, you'll just keep on doing what you're doing. But if you think for even a second you could be wrong, you ought to take those. It's got the Quran in it, and it's got the Bible in it. And the, the Quran is in itself. Did you, guys have, did you guys keep every pamphlet for every other religion? Well, I don't have a pamphlet uh, for every religion, Catholic. no. I, we have no. a Catholic one. We have Catholic ones. Yeah. I have one that, that's really basic that can be from Mormons yeah. and Jehovah's Witnesses, too. So, so yeah. you want every denomination to convert to whatever denomination you are... Well, you're not a denomination. You're a different religion. Yeah. We, we're not a part of a denomination. Right, right but, but I, 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 I want the truth for myself and for everybody else. And so I, I, I've been a part of the Baptist denomination. I've been a part of the Nazarene denomination. I found errors in both of those, so I came out of them. I'm simply telling you the truth is what matters the most. And Jesus himself called himself the truth. And he said, the truth will set you free. 
So you can be set free from your lies and your deceptions by believing the truth. That's what God wants for you. That's why you're here right now. I mean, that's really, I mean, you're, look, you're one of the last ones here, man. And we're here telling the truth and you're listening to it. You're in the sun, too. And so we, we just, we encourage you to just. Everyone's ignoring you. Well, I mean, there a lot of more of your before, but that's beside the point. Just We're just being faithful to the truth and faithful to you, to tell you the truth. Will you, will you take those tracks? Will you take them and read them, if he give you one? What? The things that he tried to give you before, will you no, take... No, I'll not read it. It's got the Quran in it. Yeah, I mean, I, I already know whatever it says. No, I don't think you know what it says. I'm it from David Foote's videos, and I don't agree with him. But the, the question is not whether David Wood is right. The question is not whether... I don't follow anybody but Jesus. I don't follow him. You know, follow you Jesus. To him? I've I've watched some of his videos, but I don't follow him. Do you everyone here listen to him? What do you mean by that? Yeah, he's not our. Teacher. I mean, have you listened to him? <laughs> have you watched his videos? So then, that's what we've done. It doesn't mean we're listening to him or doing whatever he says. Right. We're not just followers. We just listen to his videos. I listen to lots of videos. I listen to Muslim videos. No, I was just. I'm not, I mean, I was just wondering. I mean, is he that popular now? Another well, one's Al-Fadi. Well, listen, that, that, one, that one track he gave you is based upon one of his videos, okay? The other track is not. We take that one? Nothing new with David Wood. Will you take that track? I know. All it is is comparing the Quran and the Bible. No, I'll not take that track. See, I mean, that's, that's your choice, uh, man. But that would be, uh, I mean, that would be a proving sin. No, it wouldn't be. No, that would be. To read what the Bible says and read what the Quran says is, is proving of sin? Yeah. I mean, Why is that a proving of sin? Doesn't the Quran tell you to go to the people of the book? Because, yeah, because, but, because the Quran doesn't, because the Quran states that we're not supposed to we read, the, read any corrupted. Go to the people of the book. Well, but I it says. told you how the Bible is not corrupted, because if you claim it is, then Muhammad had a corrupted Bible too, and he copied from the Bible. I mean, he didn't copy from the Bible. It's true. Now, wait a minute, hold on. So, so when the Quran says, go to the people of the book, trust the Injil, what Bible is it talking about? There's no Bible. In hold on, hold on, bro. Let, 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 let me answer the question, bro. What Bible is it talking about? I don't have any idea. The Bible that was present during his time. Okay, so show me where that Bible is. I don't know where that is. It doesn't exist. It never has existed. Okay? The Bible at his time and before his time is the same Bible we have today. Do you understand that? We have manuscripts that go back to the first and second century, right. well before Islam, and they say exactly what they say in my Bible. Exactly. And so you're not going to sit here and tell me the Bible has become corrupted. Now, the other problem we have is that the Quran says about itself that Allah's word cannot what? Cannot become corrupted, right? Can Allah's word become corrupted? I have those two. No, I don't think the Quran says that. It does say that. The Quran says about itself that, that, that God's word cannot become corrupted. That's what it says. And so if you believe that, do you believe that? And the, this this figment, this fictional Bible you said it was existed at that point in time, it became corrupted. Then why can't the Quran become corrupted? And if the Bible can become corrupted, why not the Quran? See how you have you have no standing to stand upon. You have sinking sand. You don't have a hard foundation. Jesus said, it, "Those who hear my sayings and do them, they build their house upon the rock." Your problem is not hearing the words of Jesus and doing them. You're hearing the words of a false prophet and doing those instead. That's sinking sand. Yeah, I okay. So you have a problem. I mean, your whole basis of what everything you believe in is could possibly be corrupted for all you know. Okay. If the Bible came corrupted, so could it. I'll just die with corrupted beliefs then. Well, why would you do that, man? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you just believe the truth? What's stopping you from believing the truth? Why would you put aside the truth and believe lies and walk in them and go to hell in the end? Why would you do that? Please explain that to me. Because the Christian hell is boring. The Christian hell is boring? No, I mean, the Christian heaven is boring. I don't want oh, to be man. in that heaven. Yeah, you're deceived, man. I mean, your, your idea of boring and excitement is, is probably the problem. I mean, that could be the case. Well, what's, what's your idea of excitement? Well, Having I 70 mean, versions? I mean, I mean, art is the most exciting place that I, I can think of because, because it has challenges, it has, it has diversity, it has, it has so many activities we can do, it has so many unpredictability which doesn't exist in heaven. Okay, the, the, just bored there. okay now, now, now explain to me what heaven's like, because you know what it's like. You're saying it's bored. I mean, it's a, it's a very good place. It's where you get, you get a lot of, I mean, it's a very good place. I mean, it's, it's an example of a good place. I, I don't think you know what it's like, to be honest. I mean, you can't even describe I, it. I know the, I know the Muslim, I know the, I mean, 
of the Islamic paradise. We're not talking about Islamic paradise now. We're not talking about the 70 virgins and sexual perversion. We're talking about what the Bible teaches. Because you're telling me it's boring. Please explain to me what it's like. All you've told me is good. So how can you tell me it's boring if you don't know about it? That makes no I mean, sense I, to me. I don't know exactly the specifics, but I do know the... Well, tell me one thing about it. I mean, you get food. You get as much as food as you want. Do you like to eat food? Yeah. Is food boring? Is, is, you, and you, you think the food there is comparable to the food in the, in the heaven? Really? You think God's not a better chef than people in there? Well, I'm just satisfied with it, so I'm not... But gonna... that's my point. That's boring food compared to the food in heaven. Yeah. I mean, have you tasted any food of the heaven? I don't have to. God's the chef. God created the chefs in there. He's a better chef than they are. <laughs> you're not making any sense, man. See, you're making these flimsy excuses for them, but they're not going to fly on Judgment Day, and they're not a, according to truth. See, you don't even know what heaven's like, man. You don't even know what it's like. See, you just passed it up. No, I, I'm judging you based on what you said. And what you said, you have not explained anything to me, except that there's food there. What is it like, according to you? Okay, so the scriptures talk about how there's there's a peace there, a peace that passes understanding. There's no tears there, no death there. There's no sorrow there. There's eternal joy there in the presence of God. There's no more temptation to sin there. Um, there's no more there's no more death there. So no one's ever gonna you're gonna be with whoever's there. You're gonna be with them for all eternity. That's what the scripture teaches. That doesn't help your cause. No, I'm just explaining what's happening to you. Okay, but that's not going to help your judgment you're not day. the reason why that happened. We're laboring with you because we love I you. Mean, I mean, throughout the day, I mean, so I saw hordes of people. Well, they had to leave. Okay. It's not because you. You think they left because of you? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Vain, yeah. They just had to go. People go. They've been here for hours on the sun. So, so, so it seems like from, from what I'm hearing from you when it comes to comparing the Christian paradise and the Islamic paradise, the main difference that excites you about the Islamic paradise is that you have 70 virgins. But then you have sex each one at once and they're no longer virgins. And there's no sex in, in God's kingdom, so I just want to put it out there just so you know. So if that's what you're looking for, you're not going to find it there. You'll be very disappointed there. There's no sex in the God's kingdom. We'll be like the angels about it. We won't be giving in marriage, we won't be having children anymore. That's what it'll be like. And see, you, if you think that's like the epitome of like pleasure and joy, it's a very, very fragile. It's and very, it is carnal. It's very fragile too. I mean, it, what you're talking about is an orgasm you're getting like 10 seconds. That's that's the most important thing in life to you. And so once those 70 groups of 10 seconds are over with, where you have an orgasm, was where's the pleasure then? But still, I mean, at least you, you get there, right? Oh, okay. Do you, do, you, do you have do you have a girlfriend now? No, no, not right now. Are you planning to get married? Uh, no, not right now. Did you do you plan to get married eventually? I know. You don't plan to get married ever. No, I don't think so. Oh, why is that? I don't like the marriage. Oh, so you just plan on having sex with girls instead? No. Never. Are you planning on having sex with girls before you die? What? Are you planning to have sex with girls before you die? Yeah. Okay. Sure do. So, so you you want the the gratification of your loss without the commitment to the person. Yeah, you can't Okay. Well, at least you're being honest. Yeah, we're done. Praying for you, man. No, he does need it for sure. Sad man. I think he's, I think he's like on the verge of. Yeah. I think I think it was just pride at that. Point, yeah. You know? Yeah, it was. Uh, Maybe when he gets by himself, he'll have an opportunity for humility. You know. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? No, not really. It's just more. I'm 
just learning because I'm not religious at all. Okay. What's your background? Um, nothing really. I'm just more open-minded because I've had very traumatizing things dealing with religion. And okay. So instead of kind of repenting with it, I'm more just studying everything. Hmm. And I'm always really just interested in learning. Not really in the learning. Like, I see everybody's views. I'm not here to judge it for it. I just feel like this is how you do it. All right, then. Yeah. Well, it's good to have an open mind as long as you finally close it upon the truth. It's good to have an open mind as long as you finally close it upon the truth. You, know, you don't want to have a perpetually open mind. That way, it's almost like, it's like a city sewer. Everything just goes flowing into it. You want to. What's your definition of truth? Uh, well, Jesus is the truth, and all the treasure of wisdom and knowledge is found in Him. He is uh, God in flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, he's the Son of God, Son of the Father, and He died for you on the cross, uh, was beaten and bruised and crucified for you and for me, and He rose again from the grave, defeating death, and now He sits at the right hand of the Father, awaiting His time to return, and He commands all men everywhere to repent, because it's coming a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness. Yeah, that's the gospel. And that's what God commands you to believe if you want salvation and forgiveness and mercy. God hasn't abandoned you. No, he abandoned me very much years why do, why do you say that? Because there is too many things that have happened in my life that there is no way any God would allow that to happen. That's not true. But God's allowed lots of things to happen because he is free, he's free of free will. And so is everybody else. So not only does good happen, but bad happens because God gives free will. See, God wants you to genuinely love him. In order for you to genuinely love him, you must have unfettered free will. There's influences in your life for good and for bad, but you have free will. And if it weren't that way, you'd just be a robot. That's all you'd be. But you're not a robot. We both know that. You're not a robot. You're a human being made in God's image, and God has given you free will. So just because bad things have happened to you, and bad things have happened to all of us, okay, I'm not downplaying what you've gone through, but bad things happen to all of us. And God gives us the grace and the mercy and the understanding and knowledge to overcome those things and to be what he wants us to be instead. Have you always believed in God? No, I have not. Okay, so what has made you switch it? Well, I mean, when I was 19 years old, uh, people began to come to my life who would share the gospel with me. Okay? Actually, I was 18 at the time. I became a Christian when I was 19, but when I was 18, people were sharing the gospel with me. I didn't believe it at first, didn't really care about it. I loved my sin, I loved getting drunk, loved partying, loved having sex, loved all those things. So I didn't really care about Jesus or the Bible. Um, but as I studied it more and God began to work in my life, I saw it was true. And when you, when you see what Jesus did on the cross for you, the love he showed you at the cross, how I don't deserve it as a sinner, um, my, only, my only proper response to such love as that is to love him back. And so in a moment in time, when I was 19, 25 years ago, I gave my life to Jesus Christ in my bedroom by myself. I wasn't in a church building. And that moment in time, Jesus Christ changed me. I think the only question I do have, yep. what did Muslims do? What did Muslims do? Yeah. Well, it's not necessarily what they do, because everybody has sinned against God, including Muslims. Yeah, it's, it's, more, it's more about what they don't do, okay? They haven't trusted in the Jesus of the Bible for salvation. Just like every other sinner, the only way to eternal life, the only way to forgiveness of sins and the mercy of God is by forsaking your sins and trusting in Jesus Christ. They haven't done that, so they have no eternal life in them. No, they don't believe in Jesus. No. Well, that they have a, a guy they call Isa in the Quran, but he's not the Jesus of the Bible. I mean, it's not, but the Jesus in the Bible was also not made by Jesus, made by man. You could also be called Isa as just another name. No, the Jesus of the Bible is the real Jesus. But until you die, you won't know what his real name is. It's no, made by man. No, I know what the Bible says. Very much that, but it's based, it's made by Jesus. Well, ac actually, actually, in Hebrew, his name is Yeshua. In Greek, his name is Iesus. Yeah. In English, we call him Jesus. Those are the facts. But I no ifs, ands, buts about that. Yeah, but the thing is, the Bible was a made in Greek language. It was made in Hebrew, and even then, there's still not a complete definition of how it was, because now we're doing our research on it. Actually, actually, it was written in Hebrew in the Old Testament and Greek in the New Testament. So it was written in Hebrew and Greek. Yeah, and, but the Old Testament is not even either written right. Is what do you mean by that? King James rewrote the whole thing. Okay, so that's that's. I, I, also, before that, 
I'm sorry. Good. But before we even really, it's just people are now learning a language that we've never touched before without actually giving a cool guidance of what each word means and kind of going based off our faith. And so in a sense, we're also using technology and knowledge to let, let us know that sometimes it's not completely wrong, but some of it has been misconstrued. Almost everything you just said is false. Okay, not I'm just, in the way of science now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's false. I mean, you can so, say, so, it's kind of like saying the same thing with that one. It's also no. saying in the Bible, it also says not to judge thy neighbor while you're judging thy neighbor. Actually, it doesn't say that either. It actually does. It does, it yeah. does Matthew. It doesn't say you can't judge your neighbor. It does. No, it actually says in John 7, 24, when you judge, judge with righteous judgment. So you have the right to judge me when you judge. So if you're if you're judging, if you're not a hypocrite and you're judging righteously, you have the right to judge, of course. But that is a hypocrite. A hypocrite is someone who claims to be a Christian but not living like one. No, but if you're doing hypocrisy, if you're not even allowing Muslims to just have a different name for their own. Because it's not hypocrisy to tell Muslims they're wrong. Huh? It's not hypocrisy to tell Muslims they're wrong. But then it's like saying you're wrong. How do you know they're wrong? Because well, in that whole sense, they're believing the same thing you are, reading the same thing you are. No, they're not. They are. It's just no. not written in the same The Quran is nothing like the Bible. It's not supposed to be like the Bible, but in the sense, if we're talking about who's right and who's wrong, you can't say until you die. That's not true. It is. No, it isn't. Then what's your proof? What's the proof for what? Actually seeing it. Where's your God? Oh, I have to see God to believe he exists? No, but it's saying if his God is not right, where is yours to prove that it is? So I have to see God to prove my God exists? I mean, why are you telling Muslims to do the same? Because but I didn't say that. No. Those words never came out of my God mouth. How do you know it's wrong? Well, I can look at the Quran myself and see that it's wrong. But have you just because you read it doesn't mean that it's wrong. Well, number one, I number one, I don't have to see God to to, to no, know it exists. Not, not that you have to believe. Like, I just I've heard people say that like they've seen God. No, I haven't seen God. No, I haven't seen God. No, I haven't. I'm just trying to but that doesn't that invalidate his, his existence at all. The other is right when neither one of you have met your maker. No, actually, I have met him. So you've seen him? No, I haven't seen him. So how can you meet him? He's spirit. The Holy Spirit, li the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. So you've never physically met him? Why well, didn't say I physically met him? Based on, you know, your own faith, which is very much... No, 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 that's not what I said. I said the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. That is your own faith. No, that's the truth. Yeah, but I mean, if you didn't believe that beforehand at 18, he wasn't there beforehand, so... That doesn't mean... that. No, no, that, that's not the way it works. If I if I lack belief in God, it doesn't make him go away. And my belief in him doesn't make him appear. That's not the way it works. Faith is, the, faith is the evidence of things unseen, the scripture says. But you did not meet your God. Well, he was always there, whether I met him or not. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at one time. Okay, so with I mean, neither murderers. religion meeting their maker, how do you know which one is right or wrong? So let, let's say someone was trying to text you. You didn't know who they were, right? Send you text messages. They told you their name. You didn't believe they existed. You never met them. They told you. And then they came up one day and showed you they existed by proving themselves to you. Does that mean bef the, no, that's not what I said? I'm giving an analogy. So in that example right there, does that mean they didn't exist before then? It is in your own. That's what I'm saying. In your own, but it doesn't. But did it? Did that? Wrong. But did that person exist before then? Yeah. Okay. So God existed whether I believed in Him or not. Yeah, but I'm Bef before 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 I came before I came to the knowledge of the truth. Well, I have met God. I'm explaining to you how I met God. You don't receive it. You're talking about physical, but God is spirit. You don't meet a, a spiritual God in a physical way. Then how is Muslim wrong? I've already explained that to you. You look in the. Not really, in a way that makes sense, because it sounds like. Okay, well, I, I can give I can give you an example if you'd like. Go ahead. Okay, so the Quran teaches that um, to go to the people of the book, talking about Christians and Jews, to find out the truth. Okay, it talks about believing in the gospel, the Injil. So I bring a Muslim was here a minute ago. I gave him the gospel. I'm a person of the book. I gave him what the book says. And he didn't believe it because it contradicts what the Quran teaches. So why would the, the God of the Quran, who's supposed to be all-knowing, why would he tell Muslims to go to the people of the book and believe the Injil when it contradicts what he says in the Quran? Well, I mean, it's kind of like when we go to the Bible saying to repent for our sins, but we're not supposed to sin. It's kind of saying God died for our sins. Hold on, hold on, hold on, man. Hold on, man. Also kind of 
The Bible never says don't judge for sins. Never says that. So you, you're misconstruing the Bible says. But once again, why is why is that why is Islam false? Because the book it's based upon is false. The Bible never says that. The Bible never says that. You made that up. Where? Yeah, please show me. What's your question, Lee? Yeah. Outside of religion, like, let's just take that. And what's the word of God? Yeah. As a person, do you feel that you are entitled to judge others based on anything? Well, outside of the scriptures, I'm not fit to judge anymore because the Bible says that sinners have a log in their eye. So if you have a log in your eye, I mean, think about it literally, but you have a two by four sticking out of your eye. Matthew, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Can you hold on a second, please? The same way you judge others, you will be judged with the measure you use. And it will be measured to you. Bible gateway, Bible, Matthew 7. Okay, I'll get, I'll get that in a second, but let me address what you're saying again. She's, she's being a little rude. But so, if you have a two boy four sticking out of your, your eye, literally, can you help someone get a speck out of their eye? You can hit them in the head with their two by four every five seconds. So that's what, so the Bible's against sinners judging anybody because they have a plank in their eye. So for anybody that is under the religion of Christianity has the right and or privilege to judge others as they see fit. No, absolutely not. The, what you said, Dennis, what you said, Dennis, is completely false. So Christians have the ability to judge if they've taken the plank out of their eye, their sin. If they're judging righteously, they're not judging hypocritically, and they're judging according to God's word. How do you know that they're judging righteously? What is according to God's word? According to God's word. According to God's word, it says, "If not judging, you will not be judged." I don't. And that is all I okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll get to you in a second. I already said I would get to you. No, we're not doing the same thing at all. No, we're not doing the same thing at all. Because, 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 because if we. Because if we if we were doing the listen if we were doing the same thing you would have heard everything I just said you didn't even hear it. Well, I mean you did not hear what I said. You said I, it's not in the Bible. and I'm telling you it's in the Bible. That doesn't say judging is sin. Judgment is sin. Where does it say that in that verse? Please show me where it says judging is a sin in that verse. So just because your uncle is a pastor. Most verses don't have it like verbatim. But as it doesn't even come close to saying it. As a, as a child, I was also told many times in the church that you were not supposed to judge others because it's So they couldn't be wrong? They couldn't be wrong about that? Okay, that's my point. I'm giving you what the Bible teaches. Well, you listen, I did give you John 7:24. I also gave you 1 Corinthians 2.15. These verses talk about these very things. Now, Matthew 7, 1, what is the consequence for judging? Okay, so, so the manner I judge people, I will be judged the same way. Now, why would I have a problem with it? I'm not doing the things that science is talking about. Because it's treating people with grace and kindness coming off. It's saying you know saying? Like, that saying not to push religion or force That doesn't say that anywhere in that verse. You just made that up. It I says, say it says, if you judge, back, back it up, it's if like you, you said, judge, you'll be judged. Back it up, just like you said, we're not listening to you, you're not listening to me. It never said so that you will be so we have, we sin, have, or it's considered uh, a sin. It's time. basically guiding from, you. If you read you know, it in the source of guiding and not in the source of forcing others, it's telling you once you Everybody start judgment on others for their own sins, you're basically going to be doing the same thing. So nobody will believe That's not what it says. Yes, it will. It says, judge not lest you be judged for with the measure you use we measure back to you that's all it says and then you read down to verse judge five not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. so judge with righteous judgment so how is muslim not righteous judgment? <laughs> well how is saying telling a muslim that they're wrong is a righteous judgment because it's true how is it true that because the bible says so that is an opinion, not a that's not an opinion so the bible says it doesn't. It it is. Is. Where does it say in the Bible that the Quran is strong and Muslim? The Bible is says idolaters will not inherit his kingdom. It's not idolatry. That does not mean God. It's idolatry because they don't it have the same say, God. But just like you were getting on me, it did not say Muslims were wrong, right? So that does not mean Muslims are idolaters. No, they're not. Muslims were not around when the Bible was written, so it couldn't possibly. Be. We were around when the Bible was written, so how would you know? You weren't around when the Bible was written. We were not. 
around. Right. We were not around. So how would you right. know if you're going to do that? But my, my point is, why would the Bible say Muslim if the Muslims weren't even around yet? But why would the, because it was written by man uh, to fucking get away from y'all. Okay. Not made by God because I'll, God does not I'll let you, I'll let you, I'll let you believe what you want. I mean, I labor with you quite a bit on this issue. You don't seem to want to. I mean, but you're not you, providing you don't, anything that actually No, I, I provided quite a bit, actually. You, you don't seem humble. You don't seem teachable. So. Yeah, it does matter, yeah. Because God only gives grace to the humble. But it's not grace, it's judgment. And at the same That's why you're getting judgment, because you're not you're not humble. You're full of pride. That's why you're getting judgment. God doesn't want you to have, he wants you to have grace, but you got to humble yourself. I know the greatest way to telling a whole religion. I want to go what the Bible says, not what Does it feel good when you pass out that judgment? It's not about feelings. I don't care about feelings. I care about the truth. But like, let's say you do pass along judgment that you deem is righteous, right? Stay with me. But the person you're saying it's it hurts them. Is that what you wanted? Okay, so the Bible says that you have a conscience given to you no, by that God. Is that what you as a person wanted to do? I believe the Bible. If you don't want to hear the Bible, you might as well walk away. I'm my own person in Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I'm a slave of righteousness. I'm a Bible broken record. I'm a Bible parrot. I, I don't care what you say. You can be autonomous all you want. I'm a slave to Jesus Christ. Hear me out. I got that. I just mean in general. I'm giving you the word of God. You don't want to hear it. You're allowed to feel with him and without him. So without him. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. It sounds like you're becoming very much complicit with the fact that the Lord can't provide any action. Yeah, I'm real. I'm real. I'm really afflicted right now. Yeah, I'm really afflicted. You're right. You pin me down. You pin me down. You nail me down. Hit the nail on the head. The Bible actually says that the big God speed to certain people. So according to you, you're wrong, actually wrong. The Bible says do not bid Godspeed or goodbye to anybody. Yes. So if he's our if he's our example and we're to follow him, why are you coming at us for that? Are Jesus? Okay, did I say He's our example. We follow his example. Exactly. You know, you know, when, at one point in time Jesus offended the Pharisees. And his disciples came and said, do you know that you offended them? He said, leave them alone. They're blind leaders of the blind. He didn't say, I'm sorry. Let me go make things right with them. I'm sorry I offended you. You know, please forgive me. What? No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying he didn't say those things. I'm saying they're, he said they're blind leaders of the blind. Leave them alone. That's what he said. The Pharisees. Doesn't matter who he said it about. He said it about somebody. So this proves your point that if you don't say hi to somebody, that it's wrong and sinful. He said, leave them alone. They're blind leaders that are blind. He wasn't having anything to do with them. In fact, at the end, at the end, when he was being accused falsely, well, listen, listen, at the end, when he was being accused falsely, he ignored people. They didn't even answer their questions. Also, just because they are hiding behind a veil of somebody. Listen, you can make all the excuses you want, man, but it's not going to work on Judgment Day. But that's not saying it's right for you to go and these signs they work. That's what I'm talking about. God has paid him to our love God. I didn't say that we're above them, but as every individual human being exists and lives and has a life, we all have hearts, we all have feelings, and we all have Most people don't love God, actually. And we all have souls as well. Most people do not love God. Okay, so the Bible... So why is this world getting out of hand? If I knew that, if I knew that, telling me... They're sinners, they love their sin. Yes. It's because of evolution. That was 2,000 years ago. People is not going to be You should not word it at them like this. Um, there's definitely other ways to well, explain it. Well, you disagree with God's word, man. You disagree with God's word. God's word does not say that people are wicked because of evolution. God does pass judgment. He also 
Because they're sinners and love their sin. I'm not about you feeling me, man. Okay? I'm about giving you the truth. Feel that. Feel the truth, man. There's no energy here, man. Just the truth. The truth. Give me the truth, man. You can be set free from your sin. Yes. That's right. I follow Jesus. I obey Jesus. And as long as you're following Jesus and you're abiding in Jesus, you will not sin. That's a direct quote from the Bible. If you abide in him, you will not sin. First John 3. Yep, 6 3. You should read it. Well, see, that, that would be very ambiguous and very misleading because people take that and think that that means that God loves me just the way I am in my sin. I'm okay with God. That's the way everybody here is taking that today. God still loves me. I'm a sodomite. I'm a flaming homosexual. I have filthy words come out of my mouth. I'm, I, I believe in sexual perversion. God still loves me. That's how the Bible teaches. And the Bible teaches that God demonstrated his love towards you. And that while you're yet a sinner, Christ died for you. That doesn't mean God loves you in your sin. God hates all workers of iniquity, the Bible says. Hates all workers of iniquity, Psalm 5.5. Five. That's what it says. So just because God demonstrated his love towards you on the cross, it's because God demonstrated his love towards you by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. Does that mean he's approving of, accepting of, or loving you in the midst of your wickedness and punching him in the face every single day by sinning? But he wants to give you mercy. He doesn't want you to die and your sins to go to hell. The, the, I mean, the fact that you're still alive right now is proof God loves you. That's not how the world works. Just like how you, just like how you listen to God and you have to give the word at the same time, God has to listen to you in your prayers. You're not allowing us. But what does the word say, man? That's the question. What does the word say? But I'm just saying, do you read the word? Anyone can believe what they were taught. You got to read the word, man. Make sure you're not deceived. You gotta make sure you're not deceived, man, you know? Read the word of God. Okay.
Well, unfortunately, every group has their problems. These are ours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please allow us a moment to introduce ourselves to you. We are the Skips. The Skips. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a song about my ex-girlfriend. Yeah, mine, mine too. Mine is too. she here? Hey, hey, shut up. Hey, maestro, let me get a C flat. Mm. 